Checky check check. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. We are live streaming on YouTube on the Free Trail YouTube channel. We are going to be covering the final miles of this year's Canyons 100K. We've got some crazy action evolving in the professional ranks for both the men and the women. We're going to catch you up on that very soon. My name is Dylan Bowman, joined by Corinne Malcolm, my trusty friend, co-host, colleague. We are surrounded by cold, sparkling waters. It is quite a steamy day here in Auburn, California. Corinne's getting caught up on the trackers. As soon as we do, do that, we're going to start running down some of the action that has played out since we logged off here just about an hour and a half ago. And the drama definitely is evolving, Corinne. What do you have to say? The drama is heightening, is what I would say out there. I think there's, you know, tracker confusion per usual. That's ultra running where we run through the middle of nowhere. But um, it does appear that Cole Watson at the Clementine Aid Station is 15 minutes up on second, second being Adam Mary. So Cole Watson, he's going to get it done, folks. We think he's come up short four times for a golden ticket. He really wants that official one-two punch of a golden ticket. So we'll be uh, waiting for the local boy, the Sacramento boy, Cole Watson, to make it here to the finish line in Auburn, California. Holy smokes, the local boy. Again, we just made a video about Cole this week. He was hungry for it. He kept saying, I don't want it to be passed down to me. I don't want to get into Western States via the back door. I want to break the tape. I want to win one of these things. And here he is putting himself in position to do so. He is through Clementine, which gives him, what, 9K to go to the finish line? And it's, he went through there a little while ago. Yeah, he did. I got a, I got a text from Tony with a Sony, who's at that aid station, giving us the on-the-ground real intel that we so desperately need and want. We're going to continue to get caught up there. But yeah, Cole Oh, Watson. he's through no hands. Cole Watson through no hands at okay, 1.02 so what's, what's p.m. What's his estimated finish time? Estimated finish, finishing here in Auburn, about 100 meters from where Corinne and I sit in 33 minutes. So don't go anywhere, folks. We expect Cole Watson to finish at about 1.37 p.m. local time here in the Pacific time zone. What an animal. So now the next person we're going to be looking for through No Hands Bridge is Boulder, Colorado's Adam Mary, another great up-and-coming athlete who desperately wants that golden ticket. Yep, and then in third position, David Laney, the man, the myth, the legend. He decided to drop down from the 100-mile race because he wanted to mix it up where the competition was in the 100K. He really wanted to fight those guys again. Um, coming up short and in a seventh position at Black Canyon. Super excited to see him throwing down here. And again, yeah, looking like he is currently in third position about let's call it, you know, 13 minutes or so behind Adam Mary at Clementine. From what it sounds like on the course, it is hot out there. We are sweating here in the shade. I know that the guys were taking time. I heard from uh, Tony out on course that when Cole Watson came through Clementine, he took three minutes to get re-iced down, re-soaked before heading out again, calm, cool, and collected. And he, ex he had extended his lead over Adam Mary from nine minutes to 15 minutes over that last section of the course. So waiting to get that split on Adam Mary at Clementine. I imagine that he will come through there in the next 15 minutes. Yeah. By, by Clementine, you mean no hands. But yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And we do not have anybody except for those top three men through Clementine yet. So Simon Widman, the German athlete who lives in Vancouver, BC, we expect to be f the fourth man into Clementine. He has not arrived yet, so we will update you as soon as we do so. I'll switch over to the women here, Corinne. Yep, so that we've got, we still, we're still just through driver's flat. We do not yet have our women through Clementine. So the women, we've got four women through, five women through at driver's flat, the 78 kilometer mark. Again, that's Eda Nilsson leading the charge there. She has put a minute on Priscilla for, for G. They've run together and or back and forth for much of the race today. We saw Ida with a five minute lead. We saw Priscilla with a five minute lead going back and forth over and over again. But it looks like right now Ida's extended to about a minute lead over Priscilla Forgy, the, the Canadian coming onto our radars in real time this morning as we followed her on course. And then Arroyo Cio in third, um, about 10 minutes back from Priscilla, Anna McKinney, the Australian, um, another two, three minutes back from Arroyo Cio, and then uh, Addie Bracey, it looks to be, you know, probably a good 20-ish minutes back from um, from fourth position. So Ida and Priscilla out front, very close together, and then they've got a bit of a gap back to the third and fourth place ladies. 
Very, very cool. Again, Priscilla, a new name to me as of today. Met her this morning just as she was exiting the cool aid station for the first time, probably seven miles into her race here today, making Canada proud. You said she's from Alberta? She's from Edmonton, Alberta, Edmonton, yeah. Edmonton, Alberta. Not exactly a mountainous place, Edmonton. No, not a mountainous place. Known not that... for their ice hockey. Yeah, not that far, though, from, from Calgary, from Banff, from Canmore, et cetera. Yep. So really, like, that is... That is, those are the mountain homes for her. I know that she was down in Palm Springs um, earlier, and she said, you know, when I thought of canyons, I thought, okay, desert, Palm Springs, like those trails. And she's like, and I'm here, and it's so green. Like, this is amazing. Yeah, and again, the Canadian athletes right now on the international scene are making noise. Of course, Matthew Blanchard, a Frenchman who lives in Montreal, at least part of his time, two-time podium finisher at UTMB. Marianne Hogan also podium finisher at UTMB and Western States. Of course, now we've got Priscilla Forgi on the radar, in addition to a ton of other Canadian athletes when I was coming up. Ellie Greenwood was the legendary athlete dominating the world circuit. Gary Robbins, of course, is from my generation too. It's great to see this new generation of Canadian athletes making their mark on the sport and Priscilla putting herself in position for that golden ticket. Yep, and for those watching on the YouTube feed, I think there's been a lot of questions with David Rich's tracker all day. We've been having some issues with it. I know that he did come through driver's flat. I think he came through driver's flat in fifth. He's not showing up on the tracker. Um, it actually looks like our technically our fifth and sixth place men aren't showing up on the tracker at all. So um, we do know that David Roach is in that mix. Um, leaving, having left driver's flat, I did hear that he looked he looked warm, but I think they all look warm right now and that he, he left that aid station walking. So he is on the move. He is making his way here. And just a matter of time before we get the next split. Man, it's crazy hot here, folks, who are watching us live here on YouTube. It is smoking smoking hot it feels like western states and corinne and i would know we've sat in youtube studios for hours on end this feels every bit as warm as it does sitting on the track at placer high and the rude reality of it is that it's going to be like high 50s low 60s starting monday and through most of next week so it's going to cool off like 30 degrees fahrenheit here in auburn california but these athletes are getting their money's work worth dealing with some of the toughest conditions you could ask for yeah it's really the first hot weekend of the year everywhere i mean seattle peaked its first 70 degree degree day of spring this weekend while i'm away here but yeah it is darn near 90 it is hot in the sun the runners are through you know the belly they're in the belly of the beast right now this hundred kilometer course they are getting worked by the elements. They've been running since 5 a.m. this morning, and the first couple hours of the race actually had pretty wonderfully modest temps. It felt they were really comfortable running temperatures, and that has slowly changed to uh, direct sunshine and uh, pretty, pretty hot ambient temperatures. Very, very difficult conditions out there today. Okay. Are you going to set up the camera? Ooh. That's Ethan Vosberg, everybody. <laughs> for those who are watching at home, you can clap your hands at home for Ethan Vosberg. He is the executive producer behind the scenes. He has now handed me an iPad, which will apparently control the visual that you see. I'm sure I'm going to totally screw this up. He's going to go set up a camera at the finish line so that we can bring you live footage of the race leaders coming into the finish line probably in 45 minutes, maybe. I mean, I, th I think... Yeah, well, no, no, sorry, 26. Yeah, Cole, Cole should be here before we know it. Quick programming note. We were going to be doing a post-game show at about 5 p.m. tonight. That is now canceled. We are going to hang out here probably until 4 p.m. Pacific time, Corinne and I, and uh, they are going to be having an award ceremony from 4 to 6. So we changed our schedule. We're now going to broadcast again starting at whatever it was, 1 o'clock till about 4 We'll hope to capture as many of the top runners in the 100K as we possibly can. Before we get evicted. Potentially even getting some of them to come join us on stage like we did in we this morning's live We can carry Cole stream. up here, I think. I would, yes. I demand Cole make, <laughs> make a, uh, an appearance here on the program. Um, but just wanted to let everybody know. So we're also going to hopefully tie in some commentary about you know the golden ticket chase the conclusion of the golden ticket chase which is now ending today look ahead towards western states which of course is going to be happening in about eight weeks time of course those golden tickets will be distributed at the finish line in fact corinne i just bumped into craig thornley over there and he said hey what can you tell me about adam mary i said 
He will accept the golden ticket as quickly as oh, you he can will, you won't present it to, hand it to him. him. He will yeah. take it from you, I think. It was actually really uh, cute at Black Canyon. Uh, Tom Evans went up to Craig, and he was like, hey, Craig, I'm wondering if I can get a golden ticket because <laughs> he, um, I think it, the last time he got into Western, the, fir- the last time he got into Western States, he um, got in via the, the former Ultra Trail World Tour. So didn't have a golden ticket, but he'd come over to race Sonoma where he didn't need a ticket because he was already into the race. And then he technically got a golden ticket at UTMB this past fall, but wasn't awarded a physical golden ticket. And Craig was like, yeah, like we print them locally. How long are you in Arizona for? And Tom's like, oh, I'll be here for the week. And Craig's like, perfect. I will get one to you. And so I'm pretty sure Craig went, got a ticket printed. Gave it to Tom so Tom could fly home with the physical ticket. Well, and for those of us who follow t- uh, Tom on Instagram, you know that he's got a great man cave at his house that, like, the ultimate home gym setup. And I'm sure he's going to be hanging that thing on the well, wall proudly. Well, yeah, his, his, his wife's a professional sprint right. triathlete. I think that, that their gym setup gets used heavily by the yes. entire family. Yeah, no kidding. So Tom Evans is going to be in the Western States field, and we that is he is but one character in what might be the most interesting 100-mile 100, 100 field ever assembled on American soil, at least, this year. Particularly, too, in the app, it's, it, like, my thing is that I love that it is so, like, the field is going to be so exciting, and it doesn't even have, you know, the Jim Walmsley, right? Like, I think that, like, to know that the field is that exciting, that interesting, that dynamic, and to be missing arguably like one of the greatest in our sport, I think says a lot about the evolving men's and women's races that are so interesting and so engaging. You know, maybe this would be fun to talk about. I mean, just the young depth in the sport right now is startling. Mm-hmm. I was just in Japan last week racing a 70K as part of UTMF, And holy smokes, I mean, I've raced in Japan a few times now, going back to 2016, and it is remarkable to see the depth of competition improving in Japan. And I think that's representative of every country worldwide. There's now so many young athletes who are identifying trail running as a sport that they want to pursue on a professional level. It's exciting to see. And and still really cool, though, that you see, you know, currently the top the, the first and third place female right now in the 100K race are in the 40 to 44-year-old age group. Our second place finisher today, our first and second place finishers in the, um, I guess, I think Heather is not quite 40, but um, Katrina is. Katrina is, Jennings. Yeah, yep. Jennings is in that 40 to 44-year-old age group as yep. well. And so it's like, yes, we've got the Jeshwin Smalls, those 25-year-olds coming up in the sport and identifying trail and ultra as the place that they want to be. And we also have, you know, these folks like Ida Nilsson currently leading the women's 100K race at, as a master's athlete. Such a good point. Such a good point. And there's so many sports now where you're washed up when you're 25 years old. Like, you know, Formula One racing is sort of moving in that direction professional tennis oftentimes so trail running is more like golf where you can be great when you're 25 but also great when you're 48 you know and uh it's great to have that contrast on the race course yeah one 100 percent. so right now again we are waiting for updates from the men coming through both clementine and no hands three we're really excited to see them come through no hands three that next split is going to be coming from adam mary at no hands, he should be there any minute. And then we'll be waiting for our men's race leader, our potential winner, should be our winner, Cole Watson. Don't even say it. <laughs> you could, can't could you be. can't count your chickens until they until they're hatched, but we I know that Cole Watson we, fans we in want the I think I mean I think he's my he was my free trail fantasy pick. Yeah, was he? Yeah, I gotta check who I picked and yeah, maybe that would be a fun thing to look into in just a sec. I'm just looking at the men's top ten here through at least drivers flat. One of the things we commented on earlier is that oftentimes Americans have a hard time going over to Europe and competing on European soil in the dynamic and in the terrain that is local to their local landscapes. Oftentimes it's the case where Europeans come over to the U.S., especially in hot, dry environments like this, and have a hard time. But right now we've got, it looks like, four Europeans in the top ten of the men's race. Simon Widman, who again lives in Vancouver, B.C. Roberto Mistrato, an Italian athlete who's sitting in fifth. 
Sebastian Spaler, who well, I, is I back. Think, I think we're missing men. I think we're missing David Roach in that. I know that he left driver okay. flat in fifth. So it's like. Cancel what I just said. No, no, no. Don't cancel it. I'm just saying like, yes, international men in that group. We've got a Frenchman, an Italian, a German man. A, we've got men from the UK. I do think that we're probably miss, missing um, Bland as well in there. I think his tracker might be having some issues. So we've got this great mix of athletes making their way into that, but we do have, we do still have some tracker issues, but the women's side too, right? Like we've talked about that all day right now. The women is, it's Sweden, Canada, Spain, Australia, and Naomi Brand should be in that mix too, New Zealand, via, um, also via South Africa. So it's, we've got a really, really stellar international field yep. showing up on a hard day. Yeah, such a good point. Such a good point. Yeah, the women's race, Sweden, Canada, Spain, Australia, and now Japan also represented by Yuri Yoshizumi, who is sitting in ninth place in the women's race. So if the trackers are to be believed on the women's side, half international representation in the top 10, which yeah. is pretty great to see. I think we're having less issues with the trackers in the women's field. I think Addie Bracey's tracker was doing some funny stuff earlier, but otherwise their trackers seem to be working. I'd want to know where Naomi Brand is. Adam Mary threw no hands 117 p.m. local time, so just about a minute ago he went through. And Adam Mary, 15 he's minutes that back. 15 minutes back, yeah. so the, that's that time has stayed consistent between Clementine and No Hands Three. And he should have a cushion to David Laney, assuming that these time splits are accurate. Another he should have minutes. a pretty safe, a pretty safe cushion to waltz the final 5K down here into downtown Auburn. And if you're just joining us again, we are expecting Cole Watson 20 minutes out from a huge local victory and a golden ticket designation into June's Western States 100, yeah. which he is hungry to return to. And Justin Grunewald's tracker just came back online, again, putting him at driver's flat as well. So I'm not sure exactly where he is in that mix, but his time splits don't make sense unless he spent a long time there. Um, so we'll be waiting to see. Maybe we'll get an accurate split at Clementine. Maybe I'll text Tony. But that is kind of where we're at right now, those top three men. We know that David Roach is in there somewhere. We think Justin Grundewald is still in there, but we're not certain. It sounded like he might have dropped, but his tracker is still showing up on the board. But we'll get. it looks like we're getting good splits from Clementine and good splits from No Hands. So we will be able to predict, I think, our top five men pretty handedly as they make their way towards Auburn. Corinne, I'm on my second sparkling water here of our second broadcast. So let's keep, keep score. I already put one down, oh. not to brag. Oh, my goodness. Yep. When Dylan starts burping into the mic, you know that he's Gotta had enough stay sparkling hydrated. water. I'm sweating right now. <laughs> Um, back to the maybe conversation from earlier. Obviously, we had the pleasure of hosting a lot of the podium finishers for post-race interviews from the 50K. I thought it was pretty interesting. Obviously, the one person that we were missing was uh, your Eric. guy, Eric yeah, Lipuma. Did Eric you have Lipuma. a chance to connect with him? I haven't. I yeah. should text him. He's probably in the shade somewhere. We were joking before the race because he can do really well in the heat. He performed super well at Thailand in the heat. Um, but when we saw the temperatures for the 100K this week, we were like, ooh, maybe it's a good thing we dropped to the 50K. But here's the thing, too. It's like, you know, he's like, yeah, sometimes I do great in the heat, and sometimes I'm a pale Irishman who shouldn't be out there. So he had a, he had a sun shirt on, it looked like, trying to keep the sun, sun off of him. So <laughs> um, excited to kind of hear how, how that went. But he was prepping for 100K, dropped down to a 50K, which we know is fast and furious. So I'm sure yeah. that felt a bit weird. He's solid and consistent. I mean, I can't remember a performance from him that has been – you know, sort of an implosion or... Yeah, seventh at, seventh at Worlds. Had Which a is great, a huge result. Had a great chuck yeah. nut, had a great race here. Going to go to Worlds in Austria in yeah. June, and then uh, hopefully CCC in August. Like, that, that's a great season. Yeah, that Worlds team, maybe we could talk about that if you want to pull it up. We should also mention, obviously, we've mentioned the golden ticket chase many times, and we talked about this on the live stream earlier today, but there is also consequences for performance as it relates to the UTMB World Final. Consequences? That makes it sound negative. Well, I mean, there there are, uh, what should I say, positive, implications? Positive yeah, com there consequences? Are, rewards? There are rewards based on performance <laughs> for the UTMB World Final happening, of course, uh, in early September over in Chamonix, France. Today, in the top 10, if you finish the 50K or the 100K in the top 10, you have automatic qualification into OCC or CCC. 
And now there is new qualification standards where you can potentially bump yourself up or down one category of distance. So, for example, our top 10 today might be able to bump themselves back down into OCC and or up into the UTMB. Of course, one of the world's most incredible sporting events. Sorry, I'm just thinking about, about team stuff here, making sure I have all the names name straight. Yeah, the team thing, uh, and Corinne, I don't know if you and I have talked about this on a podcast or something, but I felt like the world championships that they held in Thailand in November was like the first time they actually got it right. And well, now it was, it was a team event. It was a team event, and they had short distance, middle distance, long distance, all happening in the same week. You could, If you're a fan of the sport, you could tune in nonstop and be entertained by incredible world-class performance. And of course, the Americans, who I am unapologetically biased for, performed incredibly well with Adam Peterman taking home a individual gold, the American men taking home team gold, Ali McLaughlin taking home the vertical gold, and the, uh, the up-down bronze medal, in addition to many other amazing performances from the American team. Yeah, and the team this year is incredibly solid. So we had Lake Sonoma just a couple weeks ago, the 50-mile race there, which has been a golden ticket race in the past, I think really felt like its former self in all of its glory, being the team qualifier, three spots on the line for men and for women there. Um, and, I mean, people people showed up. That race was amazing on the men's side. Drew Holman, Caleb Olson, and Preston Cates took those podium spots. They also accepted their spots onto the world's team. They had three more spots to fill, fill via resume. They went to Jim Walmsley, Zach Miller, and Eric LaPuma. Like, that is a solid Baller. mountain yeah. team for the 80K in Austria in June. That that race, I think, is going to be like 82K with about like 17, 18,000 feet of climbing or something. So it's a good mountain race. On the women's side, you had Aaron Clark win that race. It was really cool to see that women's battle happen. She won over Allison Baca and Sarah Kyes, a great mountain championship team out of those three women. And then via resume, you had Claire Gallagher, um, Hannah Allgood, and Shay Aquilano, the super young, fast, flat ground stud being named to that mountain team as well. And so I see the, both those teams and I say, wow, they're mountain capable. I think they nailed it with team selection. And I think that we're going to have two podium capable teams at Worlds in Austria. Did you catch up on what happened at the Sunapee Scramble today? I have not I yet. I haven't seen yet either. Put tell, it in the chat. Yeah, Let what, us know what, what happened, happened at the championships out east? Tell us, tell us. what the teams are setting up like for the shorter distance races. And then there's one more qualifier back on the east coast. For the 42K team. For the 42K. Team. Yeah. It, I think it's next week or the week after. And important to note in the chat if you're just joining us too. Yeah, so we keep talking about the top 10 here for the 50K, the 100K, and the 100 mile. Those spots going to OCC, CCC, and UTMB, and that is because it's 10 deep here because it is the UTMB World Series major for the Americas, um, so for North and South America. The other ones are Valderon in July um, in Europe as for the European continent, and then Do Intian in Thailand in early December, I believe, is that championship, and that is for the, like the Asia-Pacific region. Um, that is why it's 10 deep. That is why so many international athletes have also come here for a greater opportunity, a greater shot to get in to those UTMB World Series finals in end of August into early September this year as we watch our producer run frantically around <laughs> in front of us. I don't know whether to interpret that positively or negatively, but Ethan just sprinted around us. Hopefully he's got a camera positioned at the finish line because we do expect Cole Watson to be storming down that finishing shoot in about 12 minutes. From the chat, it sounds like um, uh, Grayson Murphy crushed it today at the Sun of P race. So Good to have her back. Huh? That sounds that sounds pretty pretty right to me. So, but I know that there was a lot of uh, of crushers out there. So excited to see what happens. It actually sounds like a Canadian won the men's race. Um, Alec Rickard of Squamish, BC. So he will not obviously make a U.S. team spot. A bunch of the Canadians came down to kind of get a get a race in under their belt um, coming down from Canada. Joe but Gray, second top American man. That yeah. guy Uns doesn't miss. How, yeah, it's like how many national championships has he won? Like 20? He'll tell me. He'll jump on here and let me know how many championships he's won. But it's, yeah. it's astounding. Like the most decorative, decorated short course trail athlete of our generation. He's like my age too. He's like 36, 37. He's, he's still he's a dad of, he's a dad of like, two. Yeah, a father of two in those like 45 minute races. He's still keeping up with these young bucks. It's incredible to see Joe Gray, an absolute legend.
Good to see him back on the team. I mean, that guy has competed in more world championships probably than anybody across any sport and has a ton of USATF titles to his name too. Yeah. I bet his home gym, his man cave is all metal with plaques too. Um, Brett is our unofficial and we uh, got our we got our live stream up from the finish line here. Sweet. And Let's, we also have Roche through Clementine in fourth. So, okay. Let's check a few things. One, thank you to Brett Hornig for being our unofficial off-course correspondent, for giving us all the intel that we need as he frantically waits for Cole to finish as well and David Laney to finish. Um, that's a good day. Brett, you've ha you're having a good day. People are, people are running well. Um, but uh, Grayson Murphy finished 13th overall and won by five minutes in the women's race out at Sunapee today. Wow. Absolutely. By five minutes? One by five. In a vertical race? Was today the vertical or the up-down? I up think down? today was vertical. the vertical. Yes, because Joe's just doing the vertical, I think. Wow. Well, it's great to see her back in good form. I know she was dealing with some injury. Anyway, we've got our live stream going from the finish line. I can't believe it. Again, if you're just joining us, we had no idea what we were going to be able to provide from a live stream perspective when we woke up this morning. Corinne and I kind of screwed up. The first time that the athletes came through cool, we went the wrong direction, we ended up not it. getting the footage that we wanted to. But luckily, the team backed us. The team made up for our early error, and uh, now we're putting together a pretty awesome broadcast. Yeah, and we do have updates from the field. We have David Laney through No Hands 3. Again, he is about... he's. He's closing a little bit to Adam Mary, actually. His predicted finish time is now only seven minutes behind Adam so that he he took five minutes out of Adam Mary on that last section he went from 15 minutes down to about 10 minutes down there he's projected to not he's gonna run out of, he's gonna run out of room David Laney is likely gonna run out of room between here and the finish line to catch Adam Mary unless unless Adam's having a hard time but Adam's still holding that gap of 15 to Cole so it doesn't look like he's imploding but no that looks like he's moving pretty steady and I mean, David's Laney, moving well god man he can close hard too we all remember or at least you and I probably do. I think it was probably, was it 2014, 2015 when Laney finished third at UTMB and he came from, I think he was like 30th He's a at closer. Lake Contamine. He's a closer. He ran the back half of that race just absolutely out of his mind. Ended up. I was going to say, good to note too, David Roach is through um, Clementine. He's in fourth. But he's 30, he's, pred he's predicted to be at no hands in about 33 minutes. So he's about 30 minutes off um, 33 to 35 minutes off uh, third place right now. But he's hanging in there. This is his first race ever over yeah. 50K. This is a big deal. Nice job, David Roche. Most people will know him as a coach to a lot of the sport's best athletes. He's an incredible athlete himself and I think has always put his own career on the back burner in service of his career as a coach. So it's good to see him putting a lot of hard work probably this winter and spring at his home base in Boulder, Colorado. David, also a new dad, their little boy, Leo, joined us, I think, six, six and a half months ago. And his amazingly talented, intelligent wife, Megan Rose. Doctor, just, doctor. Doctor, doctor, just completed a PhD. So making us all feel lazy here. But great to see David Rose still battling through a tough battling low Battling through patch. what I'm sure is a hard low patch out there. He's, I know that he has been working on training his gut to be ready to handle those calories. And that is, has, I think, that oftentimes been a, a, his weakness in the longer distances. So I think this is going to be confidence inspiring to make it through this thing and to make it through this thing pretty well. I think learning lessons out there, he led early, but it's like, you know, you're going to be tired in my mind at mile 40, no matter how easy, easy you go out. And so I think, uh, I don't think that was unwise of him by any means. I just think this is David's first race over 50 K and it's horribly hot outside. So I think Brett is correcting me joe gray i think is 39 that's incredible man still smashing the vertical races yeah no so, the, and, so which great. is a vo2 max test essentially yep. right like a vertical race is a vo2 max test and he's still putting us all to shame yeah i'd love to see him do the up down too i wonder if he'll jump in yeah i have no idea and i wonder if part of that's preservation a little bit yeah. too just not recovering quite as quite as quickly yeah but, yeah, super, super excited to follow along with those races this weekend. And then breakneck is, what, a week or two away? A week away. Yeah, it's next I wonder, weekend. I don't know if Brett or somebody else in the chat knows anything about the guy who beat Joe, Alex Ricard from Squamish, B.C. Squamish, again, we're talking about the mountain Canadians. Athletes, yeah, Canadian great, mountain athletes. Canadian mountain Nick athletes. Nick Ellison's in that zone. Like, 
talk about just an incredible training ground, a, not not too dissimilar from the the vertical relief you find in the Cascades, just just south of the border in Washington State. Like really, really cool rock to be running up and down on. Do you think this is accurate, Corinne? That it, it has Eda Nelson in seventh overall is the first female. Priscilla Forey. What second. was her time through female driver's at flat? Eighth overall. Tell me. Twelve twenty three. Yes, that is accurate. Priscilla on her wheel, 1224 through driver's yeah, flat. Yeah, so they, they are, in fact, in the top 10, and they are just ahead of Roberto Mastrato of smokes. Italy. So they are the in, Swede and the Canadian coming out of the snow. Coming out of the snow. 90-degree the temperatures. They're currently running in 7th and 8th overall. They're sandwiched between a German athlete and an Italian athlete in the men's field. Really, really excited to see those two women working their way up into the top 10. And if you're looking at our big screen here, you see the man, the myth, the race director of the Western States 100, Mr. Craig Thornley, awaiting our men's champion, who we expect to be Cole Watson, arriving in four or five minutes. Craig Thornley knows Cole personally. I think he is going to be excited to hand him a golden ticket. Yeah, and if you're listening to us and you're not recovering from a really hard, arduous effort in the heat or taking care of someone who just ran 100 miles or 100K or 50, 50K or 25K, uh, go ahead over to that finish line and make sure that we welcome, welcome Cole in with a huge, huge celebration because he's finally, he's finally going to check that box, get that golden ticket, grab that finishing, like that finishing tape. It's going to be, I'm thinking tears. Tears, I think, are in the works Biggest here. Biggest result of his career, for sure. I, and we've been waiting for this, right? Yeah. He's been knocking at the door. He's been Mr. Consistent. He's had races where he's been too aggressive, races where he's been too cautious. And he said, hey, I need to find the right mix of that. And you could hear that, like, confidence and that maturity of, like, yep. thinking, I, I think I might have this figured out. I think I'm getting closer to the right blend of being aggressive and, and holding my cards a little closer to the vest. And that has played out today. He was told he was not allowed to lead until mile 40. That's, I think, when he took over the lead of this race. He is. He said, okay, coach. Yeah, I'll I've arrive. got you. I'll yeah. arrive. We're, we're not. It's not, yeah. we're not volunteers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we can, what, what, can, can oh. you get me the license plate? If you drive a black SUV with the license plate 6C-Z-1-B-B-3. B, if you drive a black SUV and you're parked near the expo uh, behind a black sprinter van, you need to move your vehicle so we can get 100-mile drop bags dropped off, please. Oh, uh, we're... Thank you. Oh, it's us. It is us. Sorry, guys. No, it's not us. Ethan's going to the finish line. No. I don't know who yeah, it is. Ethan, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's because of oh, this. Yeah. Ethan's freaking out because our camera's down. Oh, it's, it's not us. Okay, Ethan is sprinting to the finish line to try and get this camera feed up and running. I bet it's hot. Our guy, Ethan Vosberg, the hardest working man in trail running. 20 years young, and he's an absolute technological wizard. Yeah, so again, if you can hear our voices and you drive a black SUV and it's parked near the expo, you are blocking a moving truck from dropping off a 100 mile uh drop bags so if you could come with your vehicle that'd be great okay. oh and cole just finished oh, oh cole just finished we have it on our <laughs> camera oh it's up it's up it's okay up. yes cole watson yes cole watson your 2023 men's champion of the canyons 100k punching that golden ticket to western states they put a cold wet white towel over the top of his head immediately oh big hug from the race staff cool story too his wife jocelyn works at hoka cole is sponsored by hoka who is of course supporting our coverage here today and throughout the weekend so it's a family victory here on home turf for cole watson with jocelyn his wife i'm assuming that's her there to greet him at the finish. Unreal. We're not volunteers. What are you? I'm sorry, we're live on YouTube. Is there? I have no idea. You're going to want to talk to the volunteers in this group or someone over here, but we don't have that information. More finishers coming over the line here. Hard to tell what distance race they're in. But it was cool. We just walked over to the local and sandwich shop, Smoothie Jocelyn Bar. Jocelyn couldn't be here today, according oh, to Brett Hornick, because she is heading up the production at the Big Sur Marathon. 
Wow. So she's busy wow. working. Cole's busy working. They're going to have a lot to celebrate later today. Way to go, Jocelyn. I'm sure she's bummed to miss this in person. But look at Cole on a knee saying a prayer. That Golden is a goosebumps moment hand. there. Boy, that is awesome. Unbelievable. So great. So happy for Cole. He put so much into it, man. That's the real stuff right there, man. When it's just all comes together, you have a chance to show your gratitude to the universe, whatever you believe in. These are spiritual encounters. You know, it is like, this is everything. This is being human. I Amazing mean, job, Cole he's, Watson. He's worked for that for so long. Like what? And it like, and, and you've got to wonder at a certain point when you come up close and you come up short over and over again, you like begin to doubt yourself, right? Yeah. Like, am I ever going to do it? Is it ever going to be my day? And yeah. like, he keeps working, he keeps pushing. He did it. If you want to see his last hard workout before this race, um, when we're done today, go watch the uh, five minute video we dropped yep. earlier this week of him crushing a workout 10 days ago, getting yep. ready for this race. Yeah. Shout out to our boy, Ryan Thrower, who put together that awesome video of Cole doing his last hard workout before the race. Now, with the context of him winning, it's a really special thing to behold because he really talks about what it would mean to him to win here on his local trails, punch that ticket to Golden or punch that golden ticket to Western States, and he's been able to do it. Yeah. Huge, huge day for Cole Watson. I know that he's been waiting for this. I know that he ripped that ticket out of Craig's hands. Unbelievable that we started today having no idea whether we would do a broadcast. Now we have live footage of the finish line. Just as I say that, it melts down again. But yeah, no, the the yeah. phone the phone that is streaming the footage from the uh, finish line, uh, I think is getting a little hot. So Ethan is physically moving it around over there to try to keep it in the shade. We'll be waiting for our next our next male to come across the finish line in the hundred k. Hoping to get that golden ticket is going should be. Boulderite, Adam Mary. He's probably cresting Roby Point right now. And, and here's the thing too, Adam Mary, another guy who's been like knocking at the door, right? I think he was he was in my knocking at the door category in our race preview with Sage yesterday. He's a guy who's been waiting, I think, to ascend the podium, right? That chucking up performance, I know, like invigorated him, yep. right? Like that was such a huge day for him. This is continued validation of his effort of the time he's putting into this he is a new dad brand he's new like, dad he's like yeah. changed course career like career course wise a little bit financially to make sure that he can like best support his family now to be able to perform with all of that in mind with all that going on to hopefully be that our second guy in for that golden ticket he'll be at western states in june that's a big deal i mean Potentially the most feel-good men's golden ticket result of all time with Cole Watson and Adam Mary. I don't want we shouldn't get presumptuous. Adam Mary, we're assuming will be our second place finisher. He should arrive here in 10 or 15 minutes. Final finishing time for Cole Watson, eight hours, 34 minutes, 38 seconds, smoking fast time on a tough day here in Auburn. Yeah, and, and as this camera is set up there, right, we're trying to get whatever we can. Um, one other things that you're gonna see happening, we've got 25k finishers coming in, we have 50k finishers coming in, and we have 100 mile finishers coming in. Those 100 mile athletes have been out there since 9 a.m. yesterday. They ran through the day. They ran through the night. They're running through the heat of the day again. Yeah. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on that finish line too. But that, that's who you're gonna see crossing those finish lines that the camera set up as we wait for our podium finishers in the men's and women's golden ticket race, the 100K here at the Canyons Endurance Runs. Back to... Adam Mary, I had him on the show recently after his victory at Chuckanut. And after Chuckanut, he posted a picture of what he had written on his wrist. And it was JJ, which stood for Julie and his wife and their son, Arthur J. Mm. And then he drew a square, which was representative of being in the box, which was a term coined by the men's world's team that took home gold in Thailand last year, the 80 K team. And when I saw Adam out on the course today, he said, he's got the same things written on his wrist today. Adam Mary out in the box, getting comfortable in this heinous heat with 60 miles in his legs, hopefully putting the finishing touches on another, you know, just breakout performance for him after chucking up. Yep. And again, we're waiting on Adam Mary, David Laney, 
waiting for a split from David Roach through no hands. We do not have any new updates from our men through Clementine. That's kind of what we're waiting for as well there, as well as our women into that next section. We can give a 100K update in the women's race from driver's flat as we await our top two women to come through Clementine imminently. So again, Eden Nilsson, Priscilla, 4G running in seventh and eighth overall. They are within a minute of each other at that 78K mark. 10 minutes behind them, again, is Arroyo Cio, the Spanish athlete running for Kraft. Another three minutes behind her is Anna McKinney, the Australian, the Solomon athlete. And then it looks like 20 minutes back of her is Addie Bracey. Another 20 minutes back of her is Mary Bowman. Mary had a great run at Run Rabbit in the fall, but yep. otherwise I think is under the radar for most folks, having a good day here. Sammy Stymack is through, just two minutes behind Mary. Brianna Grigsby, just three minutes behind Sammy. Uh, Yuri Yoshizumi, the Japanese athlete, another three minutes back. And then Charlotte Cox looks to be another five minutes back. So really your sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth Female athletes are all really close to one another. We're talking a couple minutes separating that group of four or five athletes. So that will be something to keep an eye on as the day like the day goes on. But once again, Eden Nilsson, Priscilla Forgey out front, basically together. That, I think, is the story to follow as they make their way to Clementine, then to No Hands, and here, ultimately, in Auburn. I mean, it's almost rem reminiscent of Black Canyon, the last golden ticket race, where Keeley, Heather Jackson, and Eden Nilsson were going doing battle and then we like had Keely 55. and Heather branch yeah. off and Ida kind of made and they it were together through mile 59 until Keely put the nail the in hammer. the coffin yeah but no holy I... smokes women's racing right now it's off the charts yeah it truly truly is off the charts so again we expect Adam Mary to be here in the next eight to ten minutes we expect David Laney to be here in the next 15 to 18 minutes um and again waiting for more updates to come from the course from Clementine and no hands from our men's and women's field. So stick with us as we refresh the tracker, just like you guys at home. If you don't mind, I'm trying to do it on my own computer, but it's really hot and moving very slowly. Anybody in the chat, if you could please drop Cole Watson and Adam Mary's Instagram handles into the chat to make sure our 400 plus viewing audience can give them a follow leading into Western States. They are underfollowed, up and coming, younger athletes in the scene. It'd be great to give them a little bit more support on their social channels. Somebody please do that if you don't mind. I'm texting Leah Yingling because she's texting Brett and I would rather her text me. Sorry, Brett. <laughs> but it does sound like she is at Roby Point and Justin Grunwald has arisen and we do think, and the, the word from Leah Yingling at Roby Point is that Justin Grunwald is in fourth David Roach would, should then be in fifth position. He's like a minute behind Adam Mary, is what Brett is saying here. Holy smokes, folks. Don't Justin, go anywhere. We went from thinking Justin Grunwald had dropped out. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Volunteers are handing us. People are just expoing us stuff. Kombucha. I love this. Yes. Um, I'm going to move them out of the direct sunlight. Yeah. But... Okay, so remember how we were like, did Justin Grunewald drop out? Where is Justin Grunewald? Do we know if he's alive, et cetera? Well, it sounds like he's very much alive, and it sounds like he's in the top five, potentially right behind Adam Mary. It looks like Justin is third behind Adam Mary over Roby Point. So Adam Mary does not have this in the bag yet. This is the Hayden Hawks debacle yep. of his tracker not working and us having no idea who was going to win the 50K yep. for a second. Yep, and... Uh, for those who don't know, Roby Point is the final high point on the Western States course before you drop down through the neighborhoods of Auburn to the track to finish up. The finish line here is not on the track. It is in downtown Auburn, but it should be roughly about a mile. I think it's 1.1 miles from Roby Point to the finish. So if there is a mile of separation, it is hard to make up a minute in a single mile, but this is a nail biter, folks. Don't go anywhere. Yeah, and part of the thing that's crazy about trail and ultra running and following a race and commentary is that we only have so much intel and beta, and like 30% of the time it's wrong. And so suddenly you go from thinking yeah. Justin Grunewald's out of the race to being like, oh, no, actually he's in third, a minute behind second place. Yeah, this would be a really, really solid result for, uh, for Justin, too. No, Justin is the guy who has been – Finn just messaged this to me. Like, Justin is one of those guys that has been knocking at the door – 
for such a long time too, like hasn't quite figured it out, like has had some like low key good performances, but hasn't had like a high key yep. performance yet, despite us knowing how good of a runner he is. And this would be a high key good performance for Justin Grunwald. Yep. And we would love to see that. And again, even if he finishes outside of the golden tickets, which we're not saying that he will, a top three here is a fantastic result on its own, and it does get him automatic qualification into CCC later this summer if he does choose to compete there. So yeah, there ag is again, the reward. golden ticket is a is yep. a great thing. I think all these guys and gals want that, but getting that spot into CCC or UTMB is equally a good thing to have on your on your calendar horizon. And so I think that you know maybe it's a little bittersweet to not to just miss that golden ticket potentially, but oh man, that uh. Knowing where you're going in August is also pretty cool. So Adam Mary went through no hands 30 minutes ago, almost exactly. Let's see how long it took Cole to get between no hands and the finish. Laney fourth at Roby Point. Hammering is what Brett says. Let's see, my computer's not working super well here. Yeah, everything is getting very, very warm despite us still remaining in the shade. All right, so it took Cole 32 minutes to get from no hands to the finish, just under 32. So yeah. if Adam's moving about the same place, pace, he should be in any second. And Laney, Laney fourth at Ruby Point hammering is what Brett Hornig yeah. writes in. So it's like, that is... What a race. Incredible, man. They're a hundred they're a hundred K deep and they're still throwing down trying so to get good. to this finish line. This it's, is absolutely insane. It's so good. Someone says we all need another mile. As we talk about running out of distance potentially here, right? Is yeah. is Justin Grunewald running out of distance? Is David Laney running out of distance here a little bit? But you know, we are waiting for our second place male to hit the finish line. I think our camera at the start is down. We're going to try to get that back up for you guys as we expect Adam Mary, Justin Grunwald, and David Laney to all be here shortly. It does seem like Laney is a little bit off that Adam Mary, Justin Grunwald train that crested Roby, but they are, they, so Adam Mary and Justin Grunwald might be having a drag race to the finish here. Oh my goodness. Who, who would you, like, who would you rather be getting chased by? Uh, none of the above, man. I was, <laughs> and I mean, it's worth emphasizing just how miserable it is to be racing in the final mile of a race like this. So in the, kilometers. the 2018, 2019 Western States, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was 2018. We're all like in a pack going up the, up, up the climb. And Caitlin or Laudia or Camilla or someone says, oh, wouldn't it be nice just to like run as a group the whole time? And Caitlin said, absolutely not, because I don't want to out sprint any of you in the finish. <laughs> and then that was the year that Caitlin and Camilla had that epic sprint on the track yeah. for the finish line. So it's like that drag race at the end of these races is absolutely brutal. Unbelievable. We are working on getting a camera at the finish line, folks. It's smoking hot here. And again, there, we are not working with any support or infrastructure on the live stream today so it's really a one-man show ethan vosberg trying to duct tape this whole thing together we had it up and running earlier today but it is 90 degrees in the direct sunlight down there yeah, so let, let me sure remind we'll you that our it. that our internet is coming from 450 oh. feet of ethernet cable that we've yes. strung to the newspaper behind us um so uh this is really pretty shoestring as ethan currently sprints back and forth from the finish line here he comes. He's folks. shaking his He's head. He's moving oh, faster no. than Cole Watson out there. Ethan Vosberg is ahead of steam. Ethan might need a new. Oh, there we. Oh, what's up, Ethan? You genius. You champion. Ethan, we love you. In the nick of time, we may be watching this go down together. Ethan's losing it behind us. <laughs> I can hear him. Really? Do you know who it was? Adam Mary, finish your eight hours, 50 minutes, 40 seconds. Oh, my, oh God. my God. So we don't, we did not get it on camera. Our camera was down, but hopefully, hopefully, Craig, oh, one minute ago. Craig Thornley, walk Adam Mary in front of our camera at the finish line. Ethan, walk Adam Mary in front of the camera at the finish line. Oh, my goodness. His wife wants to see him. His wife's at home. 
Cole Watson and Adam Mary take the golden tickets. Oh my God. What a race. That is incredible. Wow. Shout out to those guys. Goosebump city here in the studio. Ethan's wow. going to physically put Adam Mary in front of the camera at the finish line. So his wife and baby can see that he is physically there. Oh my gosh. I know it's sunny there, but we got to do it. My heart's going to explode, Corinne. And I didn't even have that cold brew smoothie that you had. I bet you're absolutely flying right now. Oh, I am. I'm, as the kids say, as the kids used to say, lit. Turnt. 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 <laughs> oh. Oh, my goodness. Tears for Adam Mary. Thank Katie you. Katie Asmith, tears in the finish line. There we go. Ethan is finding Adam Mary. Thank you, Ethan. Oh, I'm going to cry. We got to get Cole and Adam on the stage. If there's anybody at the finish line who's watching our stream, please do wrangle those guys. As soon as they are capable, we got to get go. them up yes, here. There we go. Yes, Ethan. Yes, Ethan, you beautiful, beautiful creature. <laughs> Oh, yes. That's Brian Meltzer there doing an interview with him right away. Yeah, Brian's doing all the work for oh, outside, Adam outside Mary watching wins Trevor Mary Chuck and second at Canyons. Now he goes into Western States. And look out for this guy, man. Just like steady, strong, consistent, doesn't get in his own way, not going to screw things up on his own. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy for that guy. That is so great. This is, this is huge. And talk about, I mean, everyone out there is deserving of these spots. Every, we, want, we want everyone to have a good day. But talk about two guys who have been knocking at the door, yeah. who have continued to put in the work, even though they've come up a little bit short here and there. There and he there's is. there's Justin. Justin Grunewald with, with the baby. With one of their two kids. Oh, oh Justin, Justin, congratulations. Justin, what a result from him. Just a minute or two back from Adam. And again, folks, if you're watching the tracker, this is going to be a complete mystery to you. Justin has not shown up all day. We thought he had dropped. Probably very frustratingly to Amanda Basham, his wife, and who's any of his there, friends. Who's been family. out there crewing yeah. him in the heat with the two daughters. She actually co. did send me a note earlier saying his tracker's not working. Do you know what's going on? And oh, I'm sorry, Amanda. Anyway, what, a hard, what a hard day of crewing she's not knowing be proud. where he is. I got to say, I just had Adam on the podcast recently, and he said something at the end of the show that just was also a goosebumps thing. It was something that he got from a Netflix show called uh, Last Chance You, and he was talking about a coach who's on the show who he really admires. And apparently, the coach said his mantra is, "Don't put on a show, win the game," and I think that's representative of Adam Mary's strategy. Don't put on a show win the game in this case he's second place but that is a win for him golden ticket and what a great guy he is amazing yeah what i mean yeah what what an amazing top three there your winner cole watson local boy our guy adam mary who's been putting in the work uh, riding that high from that win at chuckanut what a good what a great kick off to his 2023 campaign. I was going to say, I mean, now he's in the U Roy conversation. He's in the trail runner of the year conversation. I 110%. Mean, so excited for him to get that work put in for, for Western States. He'll be joining Katie, his teammate, Saucony teammate, Katie Asmith at Western States. That's got to be incredibly exciting for Katie to have another Saucony athlete there with her at Western States, someone that she cares about deeply. It's going to be really, really fun. Wow. And then maybe you've got someone like Drew Holman who's going to be racing worlds uh, come and give his Boulder boys a hand that would at be Western sweet. States, right? Who's, who's Adam Mary's crew? If his, if his legs are up for it, I'm sure is Drew would pacer, love to do it. Say, is his pacer Drew Holman? That'd be incredible. I mean, Drew will be two weeks post hard 50 miler himself. But <laughs> so maybe that's not quite in the cards. But Drew, but obviously two-time top five finisher at Western States. Knows he knows how, the course. Knows how to get it done yeah. for sure. Wow. Unreal, folks. I hope you're all as inspired as Corinne and I are here in studio from wherever you are watching. If you don't mind, I hate to ask, but please hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. We are working hard to do this here this weekend. We would really appreciate it. I feel like a jerk and kind of a doofus asking, but please do. It would mean a lot to us. So now that we have the men's podium in, we are going to start seeing... Finishers streaming over the finish line here pretty soon. I think we're expecting to see Dave Laney any second, followed by probably David Roche. And then we're going to get back to the epic battle that's unfolding in the women's race between Eden Nilsson and Priscilla Forgey. Yeah, Adam Kimball in the chat said, um, Justin Grunewald is the Jeff Colt of Black Canyon 2022. 
not mentioned all day and then finishes in third, amazing. And I said, yeah, if only his tracker had worked. But yeah, what a, what a phenomenal top three. Do we have any updated splits? We, we're waiting for David Laney, should be the next guy in. We should get a no-hand split soon for David Roach at, Clement, at, at Clementine. We've got Simon Widman through Clementine. We have Matt Daniels through Clementine. We have Roberto Mastrato through Clementine, which means we should have our leading women through Clementine as well. We do, in fact, Eden Nilsson and Priscilla, so Eden Nilsson, Priscilla Forgi, they've been one and two all day. They've been trading, trading turns in the lead they are through Clementine, the 92-kilometer mark in 844.55 elapsed and 850.49 elapsed. So Ida has separated herself by about five, six minutes over Priscilla Forgi. And then um, wow. we should be getting that, uh, that split from Arroyo CEO any minute. And that will be kind of the like, is Priscilla safe? Is Arroyo closing? So do we think they're in seventh and ninth overall here? I mean, Justin is now showing up. They're probably in, they're probably in eighth and tenth overall. <laughs> So cool. Incredible. And yeah, I think we were talking about attrition and carnage earlier in the day. That is unfolding as predicted. So let's see what happens here. Who's able to hold on for proud finishes? Matt Daniels comes to mind. He went off the front early. He had a five minute lead, I think 45 kilometers into the race before. Looks like having a bit of an overheating issue potentially. Maybe it was his stomach, not entirely sure. But Matt Daniels, it appears, is still moving. He is through Clementine. Looks like an eighth overall. So, you know, still in the top 10. Can still salvage that automatic qualification into CCC. But we should have two women finishing inside the top 10 overall. Corinne, it's sort of reminiscent of two years ago at Western States. You and I did that broadcast also. A brutally hot day. And we had 15 women in the top 30 overall. It may yeah. be that type of day here today, too. Yeah, it, it very well could be. I mean, it's a, it's a surprise hot day. Being patient is really important. Taking really good care of yourself is really important. And that is easier said than done. Again, I think unless you're coming out of Texas or Florida or maybe out of the Southern Hemisphere, you are uh, maybe blissfully underprepared for the heat, independent of sauna training at home. This is a hard, hard day. That's our an understatement. Our camera's moving again at the finish line. I'm wondering if that's, there's David Laney. David Laney is through. So a camera moving around to try to get David Laney walking his way through the finish line. So we do have <laughs> official confirmation. David Laney is through the finish line. Yes, and here we have a, some footage of our golden ticket recipients. Cole Watson on your left, Adam Mary on your right from Sacramento and Boulder, Colorado, respectively. Hold those tickets high, boys. Now, Corinne. What do you do if you're these guys? You get in an ice bath for like two days. You don't run for like a week. You assess the damage. You know you're fit. And you don't panic train before Western States, right? Yeah, you got you to gotta know that this is going to give you a fitness bump going. And I know Adam Mary has laid down some big weeks going into Chuckanut, going into this. I'm hoping that, you know, they're going to go home. They're going to be patient. He's going to reach out to some of his close friends, confidants, someone like Drew Holman, someone else in that Boulder community that you trust, Matt Daniels, et cetera. And you say, okay, like, what's the game plan? We got eight weeks, yeah. you know, but you don't panic. This is a hot, hot day. It's going to take more out of them than they expect, I think. And you really need to give yourself a reset, you know, a two week, like just get the body, body, like moving slowly, gently, et cetera. Cause you're going to bring yourself, you're going to have, you're going to be in a well for sure but then you've got time to put in a still a really, really solid training block. I'm going to see if I can text somebody to get those guys to come sit with us here. They might, they might hold them hostage for a while. Tell them that we're in the shade. If they want to come sit in the shade, they can come give us an interview. So again, quick programming note, if you're just joining us, Corinne and I expect to be live here for another two hours. That should get us the top women through the finish line also comfortably. Yep. Um, we will be timed out eventually uh, because we'll be they are going to be... kicked off the stage between 3.30 yep. and 4 p.m. for award ceremonies that are important. Um, but yeah, we're going to get you through the top women at that point in time, and then uh, we'll uh, say our goodbye. But yeah, you can expect us to be on for the next 90 minutes or so. Yep. 
until we get evicted from our stage here. Four o'clock is the awards. Yeah, oh yeah, we do have kombucha hiding backstage, so maybe they'll, they'll come if I offer them kombucha and shade. But again, so the next person we're waiting, we're waiting for David to come through No Hands 3, Simon Woodman to come through No Hands 3. David should be through No Hands 3 any moment, and then we'll be waiting to get a text from Leah Yingling, probably, who is at Ruby Point, I believe. I'm sure Mike McMonagle is running around getting amazing photos yep. out there right now, probably I think sweltering. Leah is uh, crewing for Brian Curl. Okay. So I'm not sure where he is. Maybe I do not an know update that. for the Curl fans out there. Looks like a photo opportunity here with Justin and Amanda. Amanda, obviously, also a fantastic professional athlete. Yeah, had been signed up for this, but I think recognized, too, that she's put in two really hard efforts, Bandera and Terrawera, coming up just short of Golden Tickets in both of those locations. So I think that this is, you know, that was a moment to kind of reset, I think, refocus her season. But good to see her with the fam here. Good to have Justin have a great day as well. Brian Curl, DNF, is what Brett's saying in the chat here. All righty, all righty, folks. It was really cool when we had our quick little break. We went down to the little bodega here. Oh, I saw, the, the I saw Auburn a 300 bodega. milers finish while I was out there. The Auburn bodega. In the 27, 28 hour time frame. Going through two smoking hot days out there. Absolutely, br absolutely yeah. brutal. I did. I heard a 100 mile guy earlier today say, I don't want to be a narc, but I think the electrolytes were a little light out there. <laughs> I was hurting. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really hard day out there running in the heat. The 100-mile runners have been out there through two very hot days. It is, it is peak heat right now, so they, the 100-mile athletes that are still out there are currently in their second day of peak heat out on the course. There is, there is shade in places, but it's a lot of open, yeah. exposed sunlight out there. They are going to be roasted. Uh, if you look up the 10-day forecast for Auburn, you'll see just how cruel this is. Again, it's due to be like 59 on Monday mm. as a high temperature. A Those guys sick, would have probably want run an hour faster. A sick twist yeah. of fate. Sick twist of fate. Anyway, incredible performances. You wouldn't want it to be easy. You got to add the extra complication of record heat wave here in the spring in yeah, Auburn. First, first warm weekend always gets you. Yeah, geez. I mean, it's getting me, that's for sure. <laughs> You're like, I Just am. Just blasting sparkling waters over here. I am melting. Yeah, so we do have Arroyo Cio and Anna McKenney through Clementine. So update on the women's side again. Eden Nilsson leading the women's race at Clementine, that 92K mark, waiting for her splits at no hands three. She is up by about six minutes right now over Priscilla Forgy of um, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Behind them, 12 minutes is the gap. Or so, 11 minutes approximately, actually. Arroyo Cio behind Priscilla. And then, uh, but Arroyo Cio only has a, let's call it, two and a half minute lead over Anna McKinney. So, one and two, separated about, about five minutes at the 92K mark. Three and four, separated about two and a half minutes. But a decent cushion between two and three on the women's side. Our next woman to come through this zone should be Addie Bracey and Mary Bowman, but they are probably another 22, 25 minutes behind our uh, top four. Okay, so I have sent the bat signal out and received a couple of responses from various people who are working to bring the men's podium to us here in studio for a little bit of shade and a little friendly conversation about today's race. So if you're planning to do anything, please cancel those plans, and uh, we will hope to have those fun conversations brought to your living room live here as soon as we can. Julia and Mary in the chat here, wife of Adam Mary. She's been in the chat cheering on the guy all day. Again, they've got a brand-new baby boy at home. I'm sure there's going to be a big celebration back in Boulder. It's going to be Big fun. And again, we could reemphasize what's happening in Boulder right now. It's just off the charts. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a training mecca for trail and ultra for a long time. That's why Abby Hall moved there, you know, years ago when she like got into trail running. That's why she gravitated there before ultimately ending up in Flagstaff, Arizona. But yeah, Boulder is having this kind of like recon, like not, not reconnaissance, renaissance yeah. in which we've got a really amazing training community there. Like it is it is something it's something super special. 
the board, the Boulder bubble. Yeah, the Boulder bubble. Yeah, I went running with a few of those boys last year around this time, and you could feel the energy. Matt Daniels, Adam Mary, Drew Holman, yeah. Seth Ellie, Rowan. Ellie Pell, Meg Morgan, Meg Morgan, Riley Brady, Riley Brady. Like what a group of crushers. Yeah. I mean, we're forgetting Amanda several. Basham, Justin Grunewald, yeah. Ju- Hil- David Hillary Roche. Allen, David yeah. Roach, Megan Roach. Claire Gallagher. Oh, my goodness. We Good could just God. keep naming random Colorado people. I mean, you could have the whole Team USA <laughs> come from that group, right? All right, so I got the official finishing times for the top four. Let's just bang through them. Cole Watson, eight hours, 34 minutes, 38 seconds, followed about 14 minutes later by Adam Mary, eight hours, 50 minutes, 40 seconds. Justin Grunewald, a enigma a mystery all day tracker wasn't working eight hours 53 minutes 30 seconds david laney just under the nine hour threshold eight hours 59 minutes six seconds cole watson 14 minute margin of victory pretty solid that is super solid that is i mean it's it's i think everything we wanted for him today i think uh when i put up his uh q a to go with his video on the website earlier this week i think i said you know we we are all waiting to cheer, like cheer for him when he has that day that we know he can have. And it came like, it came true this weekend. Like that is, we knew he could do it. He, he knew he could do it. And I think that like for him, this is going to shake a lot of doubt that he might've felt, you know, externally coming into this race. Liam Tryon, aid station fireball in the chat. We're relying on you to put together an analysis of where Cole put those 14 minutes into the field, because it seems like he ran like a perfectly executed race, right? Brett, his coach, said, you're not going to the lead before 40 miles. Sure enough, at the 48-mile aid station, Cole Watson's in the lead out of nowhere, virtually. Uh, out, out of nowhere by, by what, like, by five, like, like five, five, seven, seven minutes, seven, yeah. whatever it was. And then a few miles later, it was 15. He held that all the way to the finish. So remarkable victory from Cole Watson, the performance of his, his career. And awesome to see him drop to a knee for a little prayer at the finish line. Amazing stuff. Again, make sure you follow those guys on Instagram. They're criminally underfollowed. It's always good to show some love for these guys. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it, and that actually does mean something to these athletes. So if you don't mind, go follow those guys. They're now going to have an amazing journey to Western States, which the will hype, make it the a hype worthwhile starts follow. Now. Yep. The, hype, the hype build starts now. we got eight weeks to go, and you're going to be sick of us by the time we get to a golden hour at Western States, and I cannot wait. I'm going to go on vocal rest after today. (laughs) Yep. So eight weeks until the Western States 100. Before we log off, sign off here in maybe 90 minutes or so, we will make sure to do a bit of a deeper dive, concluding the golden ticket chase and maybe talking about the field a little bit for our way too early prognostication. So stick around for that. The start list of this year's Western States 100 is remarkably deep. Remarkably interesting, remarkably international, and uh, there's going to be a lot to talk about, so we'll try and touch on that a little bit, but it'll probably require like a two-hour podcast eventually, Corinne. Maybe oh, we'll do that next week. We'll, uh, we'll uh, schedule it. Put it on the calendar, team. <laughs> you send me that Google invite. I'm there. So Liam says that the, the gap extended between Mammoth Bar and Driver's Flat in the long, exposed section of the course Liam says Cole was behind Matt by five minutes at Mammoth, was up by 10 minutes at Driver's Flat. So it all came in that section. In that section where we thought it would. Those those two long exposed sections that we thought were going to be super hot and super hard. Yeah. Aaron Shim is is asking if there's going to be finish line interviews. We are trying to get the podium here in studio for quick, brief chats. We had a great time doing that this morning. You can go back and watch those interviews near the end of this morning's live stream, which is here on the Free Trail YouTube channel. Hayden Hawks looked like he had barely stepped out of bed after ripping and winning a 50K. He looked clean and fresh, and everyone else looked a little, not haggard. Yeah. I'm not going to say haggard. Tessa Chester agreed with me. She thought the haggard was the right word, but yeah. I think that everyone else looked that they had run a 50K. Yeah, and Hayden I mean, looked like it was just, I don't know, Sunday brunch time. The women's podium was all like, that was hard. <laughs> yes, 100%. Hayden was like, yeah, I've been doing 130-mile weeks. You know, this week was just like a mellow 100-miler. Next week, I'll probably keep it mellow at 100 miles and then and back then, up and then to then again you're just like my my goodness man call the ambulance if i was trying to do that stuff 
Yeah, no, I would be in bed for a week probably. We also had a really great, fun interview for those who didn't catch this morning with Jeshrin Small, who finished second in the men's 50K race. But led until mile 28 of the 50K. Young guy, 25 years old, Colorado boy, like making a name for himself. Yeah, huge result for him. Big confidence boost going toe-to-toe with Hayden Hawks. Yeah, he'll be at OCC. In August, he was pretty happy, I think, to be like, yep, bags packed, good to go. Season figured out. Yep. And that's a big deal, right? Same, that was MK, that was MK Sullivan's major goal. She said she didn't feel great, things weren't easy, it was going to be a hard day. Yep. And then recognizing, like, cool, OCC, done, good, I know, I'm going to Worlds in August, and at June, I'm going to OCC in August, done, happy, yep. solid. I really love that athletes like MK can just basically do, like, a full calendar of 50Ks, you know? Oh, I think that's like, huge. I it's think, so cool. And, and she's huge. she's doing the mid-distance race at, at Worlds, too, which is, it's yeah, like a marathon, marathon, but a hard marathon, you know, probably runs, you know, like a 50K slower at least. than this 50K, yeah. right? So, anyway, it's a great distance. Awesome to be able to, for spectators like us, to be able to watch three, four hours of Just high-octane ar- action. Just quarterbacks yeah. up here having a good time yeah well i mean i think it's good for the sport you know obviously there's there's a lot of there's a lot that's special about the you know 16 to 30 hour broadcasts but it's amazing to have adam mary adam mary hey we can offer you a seat Our and man. shade would you love that Please yeah yeah, come yeah. In hold here. on hold on okay here Let's you move. go folks stay back. tuned oh my god Bro. We'd love to get Cole as well. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm gonna hold this very carefully for you. Thank you, dude. What a day. Yeah. What a day. Hey, Dad, you're in the way the camera. We would love to have him. We gotta get a picture for your mom. Yeah, I got a picture. Yeah, I got a picture. I'll be back later. My peeps. Thanks for the vibes out there. Dude, so good. Yeah. The check. This is what people want. They want the check. Sorry, I yelled that really excitedly. <laughs> okay, which mic? I think it's this mic. Testing, testing, testing. Oh, don't ask me about me, man. Don't ask me about me. This mic? Are, are either of them on? That Can you on. hear me? Okay. Yeah. It's a little is warm. Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh my goodness, Corinne, where do we even start here? My God. Um, okay, so here's the thing. We had no idea if Justin Greenwald was alive or chasing you or anything until Me like... neither. <laughs> so uh, I guess walk us through your day. I feel like you were pretty patient. You were in the mix. We knew things were going to get hot. Like how, like, how did it go? Like, we saw you at mile 13, and then really we talked about you, and then suddenly you're here with us. So yeah. fill us in. Um, man, so I was just kind of cruising and, um, after I saw you, Corinne, um, coming back up to cool, you know, I think that was like mile 20 or something, got passed by a couple people and it was like kind of rough. It always sucks coming back up to cool, even in way too cool. It sucks. So hard. So I just threw my headphones in and just like put some, uh, Celtic music on my jam. Sick. And just started vibing. It was like, whatever, dude, like I'm just doing my thing. And, uh kind of ran alone until mile like 35. And then all of a sudden I saw Matt and he was just like super cramping, really red. Uh, Actually I saw Seb first, just walking. I asked him if he needed anything. He didn't. Then I saw Matt and I saw David and I was just like, what the heck dude? Like everybody's everybody's coming back, you know? And uh, I had passed Brandon who was running strong but took a little longer in an aid station. So I don't know, all of a sudden I was in like third, you know? And it was just like, wow, like, okay. But I remember Justin passed me going down to Mammoth Bar and the dude was flying. So it was like, I don't know, dude, like I'm probably not going to catch him, you know? <laughs> but dude, I came up on him after, um, after the aid station with crew 48. And he told me, he was like, dude, I think I like broke my sacrum. No. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, dude. I was like, well, dude, I hope it comes around. He's like, I don't know, dude. And so I thought he was done, dude. And I can't we believe- thought he was done. His tracker wasn't working His all day. Didn't work we all thought day. he had oh, dropped out yeah. at like well, 50k. Well, he was walking, like just slow walking. And so, um, yeah, when he, when uh, Richie, my crew at the 
mile from the finish was like, dude, Justin's like a minute behind you. I was like, what? And so I just hauled ass to the finishing <laughs> finish line, and I didn't think I had it until I was in the shoot. Can you talk about race management? Because this is such a hard freaking day. Yeah. I mean, we saw the attrition. It's not unusual for that to happen. But it, we were saying earlier, when it's hot, when things unravel, they unravel real quick. Yeah. How did you manage to stay on top of things all day? What were you doing? Dude, big electrolytes. Yeah, just like <laughs> I, uh, I said this in the interview with you, like EFS Pro, it's like a huge electrolyte mix. Yeah. Just like 1,400 milligrams per, ser- per bottle. And I was just drinking that literally all day. Amazing. Yeah, you, you look a little salty. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm a salty sweater. So I didn't, dude. Believe this, I did not cramp once. No cramping. But love uh, it. Yeah, like I ran out of water a couple times on those eight mile sections. Like, we thought that those were gonna eat people up. Yeah. Those two long sections in the sun. But dude, I did my heat training five days out because we were like, oh shit, this is gonna be like 90. <laughs> I was doing those five layers like Adam Peterman style. Yeah. And just like sweating it out in the sauna, and I think it paid off. Yeah. You're like, I'm a wrestler now. I'm ready. Yeah. Did you have a chance to check uh, to catch up with Cole at the finish line? What did you guys talk about? Oh, not too much. Uh, I haven't talked to him yet. But I heard dude, he was vomiting at the finish. So. Oh, dude, he ran lights out, man. Like, uh, Tyler said he was 15 minutes ahead at the river, and I was just yeah. like, oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Like, what a great race. We shared, like, 10 miles in the middle there, and he ran great. Dude, Chuckanut victory, second place here at Canyons. These are two big breakthroughs for you. <laughs> Huge Thanks, momentum builders. Thank you. And I know there's like a lot going on in your personal life too. With <laughs> yeah, brand new, man. Brand new fatherhood. Maybe yeah. just tell us like how you're feeling about everything. Because when we had you on the podcast, you talked about like you just felt good about like where you were in life right now. And yeah. I think you know for everybody watching, we all know that like that has positive benefits on our performances too. Yes. Anything you want to say there? Yeah, man. Just um, whatever you think you need to do to like get the most out of yourself and be happy in your day-to-day training, do it. Like, um, I've, like I say to Craig, like I've been trying to get into Western for like four years. And so such a long, long road. And, uh, I'm just super grateful for everyone who's helped me get here. Like David used to coach me. I, I'm not coached by him anymore, but so grateful for his yeah. mentorship, Matt, Drew, Seth, my wife and my son and oh, my they're, family. They're in the chat freaking <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, so. dude, my dad, my mom. It's like I, I wouldn't be here without all yeah. of their help. And so, yeah, it just takes a village. Yeah. yeah amazing, well, let's man. talk a little bit about, yeah, like having that moment, having that breakthrough this season. You've been working for this for years, like literally like with four, like four, four. years. And <laughs> yeah. it's easy. I think Cole's in the same boat. I want to ask him this too. Like, it's there have got to be moments of doubt, right? Like, can yeah. I do this? Am I supposed to be doing this? Like, talk about dealing with that, but then also having it pay off this spring with these two, like, massive back-to-back results. Yeah, I mean, even today during the race, like, for 15 miles, I was like, damn, like, I'm training my ass off. Like, maybe I just don't have it, you know? But I just stayed patient and kept trying to just be relaxed and do what I could in each moment. And, uh, I feel like that's me- a metaphor for the whole process. Just yeah. like day by day, just like keep doing the best you can in the situation you're in. And um, I don't know, like even during the race, just like people come back, like just run your race. Like my mom texted me that this morning and she's always said that to me when I was running the track and um, playing games. And so, yeah, I did that today. It worked. Patience. Patience yeah. is good. Yeah. yeah. So now obviously big things ahead. <laughs> The train doesn't stop. So no, to speak. man. Eight no. weeks. Eight weeks to Western States. Yeah. Like. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've probably uh, talked to my buddy Adam and get some beta from him. <laughs> he did this turnaround last year. But I think just um, trying to recover and um, just get a little bit of training in and hopefully just kind of carry this fitness in. But I'm just so grateful to be in that field. Like, it's loaded this year. It's such an iconic race. And, um, yeah, like however it turns out, I'm going to be really grateful yeah. to, to line. One of the things we were talking about is that these hot, fast races really leave a dent afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if there's anything you're thinking about in terms of this acute recovery and like looking after yourself. What sort of signals are you listening for to know that you're ready for that final block? Oh, yeah. Just uh, I'll take many days off here <laughs> and uh, just eat plenty of food, drink lots of fluids, relax, and um, listen to my body with the return to running. Like I... Uh, I'm not rushing to get back into volume and uh, I don't know, a couple few weeks and then see what, see what happens. Yeah. We are speculating here. We know Drew's got this big world race ha. in June, but yeah. is, is Drew Holman going to, are we going to see a pacer out of Drew Holman yet? Boy, I hope so, man. I'm going to twist his arm, you know, <laughs> but uh, no, I got a bunch of, bunch of folks that hopefully uh, 
I can get out and come party with me. I've partied with them for a couple of years in a row. So, yeah, it'll be fun, man. The States is amazing. <laughs> Can't I wait to it. see the team you assemble. Yeah, thanks, Maybe man. final question for you. Were you in the box today? Mega box, dude. <laughs> but no, man, honestly. Mega box, dude. Put it on a T-shirt. I can't believe it. Like, uh, just, I don't know. Like, it really didn't feel too hard, like, until the end. I love it. And it was because those, mm -hmm. those, uh, the, the, the great aid station people at No yeah. Hands were like, dude, third's right behind you. And they are talking about Tyler Green. And he was not in the race. Oh. So I just dropped but he everything. Was. I mean, no he was. Ice, yeah. And just peaced out. So, yeah, it was pretty hot. But, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Well, maybe it. before we let you go, say hello to your wife and son back home. Uh, Julianne's been in Jay. the chat. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for your support. <laughs> Arthur will be home tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, man, like, it's just so special. I can't wait for her to experience stage. She's yeah, never been yeah. there. So, yeah. Unbelievable, dude. I'm excited. Congratulations. Thank you so can't much, Can't wait Dylan. to see you we'll at Western We'll see you in June. Thanks, Corinne. Thanks, guys. Uh, I will, dude. Thanks so much. Absolutely amazing. Oh, let's see if I can get out of here. Oh, you can. We're going to hand you your golden ticket. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you Okay. Mega box, Grant. Mega, Mega box. box. Okay, let's, like Puma too. let's do uh, a quick update, I oh. think, on uh, the women's race, because guess who is through no hands? <laughs> I'm going to cry, Grant. I can't even think right now. You Julianne's in the chat. It's like, this is too much for me, man. I've broken I'm my too mic. Much it's gotten lower. Guy. Um, Eda Nilsson. Eda Nilsson is through no hands bridge. We expect oh her in the gosh. finish in 30 minutes. Currently, we believe running in fifth or sixth overall. Just eating up the guys Holy out there. Holy smokes. And we were talking about her earlier in the day. I mean, when Ida is on, man, she is hard to stop. She's not only ridiculously talented, but she's got that competitive edge, too. That try-hard face where it's just like, she's going to... She's gonna. Yeah, she's go a person who finish. looks yeah. who looks like things are going rough or things are hard early, <laughs> and then oh, this is your third sparkling water. Third are sparkling you kidding water, me? folks. Anyway, Ida looks like that. I think it's she's got that try hard face on all the time, and it's like you know that she's still in it. She's still mixing it up. Justin, congratulations. Hey Cole, when you're feeling up to it, come up on stage. When you're you not gonna catch vomit, up. you guys we'll take catch you. up. Yeah. Justin, we didn't know where you were all day. Oh we my weren't God. sure what was happening, but you're amazing. Just want to give you a shout you out. You guys are freaking. That was the most dramatic thing ever. You scared us all. You it was great. You guys scared us. Please you, apologize. You keep ultra, run, ultra running <laughs> announcing honest and exciting because uh, we're wrong about 40% of the time. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, Aaron Shimmons in the chat saying Eden Nilsson is the, the top master's athlete right now overall. Does that surprise so, any of us? Nope. Nope. Oh, we got a Cole Watson walking up on stage. We got a Cole Watson stage. appearance here. Cole, you have about 12 nicknames in the chat right now. Man, that's cool. Never, oh, never my goodness. Cole Train. Okay, this is ice too. for you, and this oh. is in case you need to vomit. Oh, thank cool. you. That's, that's yeah, yeah, it's going to be right here. If you really have to vomit, I advise that direction. <laughs> Dylan has a baby. He's yeah, used yeah. to it. I am not, sure. I'm not a vomit yeah, queen. Put it all over me. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the 2023 men's 100K champion here at the Canaan's by UTMB, Mr. Cole Watson, the local legend. Our in-studio audience pulling it out for us. Thanks, guys. Corinne, where do we start? <laughs> um, where do we start? OK, so we were told that you weren't allowed to lead until mile 40. We saw you early in the race. Suddenly, you know, you're kind of in the mix. And then you were, in fact, at mile 48. All of a sudden, it was like, Cole Watson's leading by seven minutes. And we were like, oh, OK. So a plan has been in place, and it is working. But you got to tell us about how you got there and then what that back 20 miles looked like because we were all in awe as you ran lights out it sounds like to the finish line yeah uh i mean my my coach basically told me you know 
Uh, no showboating in the first, second, or uh, third quarter of the race. You know, wait till the very end, basically. But, uh, yeah, I, I, we kind of landed on, you know, 35 or 40 uh, just because of the time of the day that we were going to be getting to Mammoth Bar or the lead the leaders were probably going to be getting to Mammoth Bar. We knew or I knew that, the, you know, the sun it was going to be the most exposed section. The terrain was going to be the most chewed up because it's like a mountain bike park in there. And, uh, you know, it's just, it was going to be hard. And if people weren't mentally ready for, you know, those eight miles uh, up to driver's flat, then, you know, they were going to fall back. And we didn't really want me to have to just make a deliberate, uh, forceful move, just uh, kind of let it fall into my lap. And um, coming down Stonewall, I, I know of a, I was getting kind of warm, and I know there's just a culvert right at the bottom of Stonewall if you look to the right off the trail and there's a big pool and it's it's hard to see so i kept that one to myself and i dove in there <laughs> you know you can you smerge your whole body it's kind of like the voice. waterfall in the last two miles you know coming up from no hands uh it's similar to that but uh i got in there so then i felt really good and then i you know the aid station at mammoth bar was awesome they got me cooled off more i walked most of east side which i couldn't imagine anybody really running in that too hard um and then I caught Matt Daniels at mile 43. He, he just he just wasn't feeling good. And, and then uh, I didn't try to press because it's still, you know, I, this yeah. race was longer. It was like 64 or 65 my watch got. Yeah. So um, Really? Wow. Long and hot. Yeah, long, long and hot. But I knew, I knew once I got to drivers, it was the best section for me. And I was going to be in the shade again. And yeah. getting it, finding the shade you know getting you know going for a swim at the aid stations like literally like yeah. just having them douse me with water put ice everywhere um it's stuff that you know i've been doing since i got the opportunity to train for western states last year and run and javelina and do some of these hot races you know living in this this environment here so it's it's exciting to see uh, all those pieces pay pay off and come together so when you take the lead, you pass Matt Daniels. What's going through your head at that point? Because you know you're taking the lead of a golden ticket race. You, we talked before the race about how important it would be for you to actually break the tape, earn that golden ticket. The storyline was that you've come up short a number of times. What's going through your head when you take the lead? Is it like, you know, now's my opportunity? Or is it like, chill, take care of yourself? I think chill and take care of yourself because I've, I've been there before, yeah. you know, and I mean, it's it's what I mean. Me and my father-in-law were talking about it the night before, and he's like, "Wow, it just seemed like everything happened exactly how you said it would." And it did. Yeah. I mean, uh, pretty much like if you go like quarter for quarter, you know, of the whole race, like mile 15, mile 30, like I was where I wanted to be. It just, I mean, may, maybe maybe everybody says says this when they have a, a good race, but I, I thought it was perfect, um, and it just came together. Uh, really well and just had a lot of faith that uh you know god was going to put me in the right position at the right time and um and then just don't screw it up you know and so i was a little scared when i passed yeah. matt because if you like it or not like now you're now you are the hunted yep and i i heard afterwards that justin grunewald was he was right there at drivers or something yeah. like maybe only four minutes back and and then he, you know, unfortunately had a couple rough miles and I guess it was just growing and growing, you know? Yep. Um, but yeah. Unbelievable, man. So, so cool. So Brett in the chat says, as far as he knows, this is your first time racing with a pack instead of handhelds at a golden ticket race. Wondering how you felt about mixing things up potentially, if that was strategy given the heat, if that was just, you know, time, time for a change, kind of what was going on there? Yeah, I, I think it was just, I knew that, this race was going to have some hiking in it and and you can like put um you know ice in the pack and oh yeah um i mean i i just i get hot you know i mean even though i get to train in this environment and like i do sauna stuff and i, I still get hot you know and it's just like you got to manage yourself and you know handhelds are great if you just want to spray water on yourself and that helps a little bit but i think really just having the ice stay there for you know 15 20 minutes and you can come back to life and um i finally got a pack that fit me and that was the biggest problem just i went through lots of different types of packs and it just they were always rubbing my neck and uh just very uncomfortable and so i found one that worked and 
So the yeah. ice is huge. It's well, a good Western states practice, huh? Yeah. Well, we're yeah. on the subject of packs real quick. <laughs> it brings to mind something from earlier in the race when I was chasing you guys with a GoPro, and I noticed, hey, man, you got a fish on, like a fish decal on your pack. You said it's a barracuda, <laughs> a predator of the shallows or something like that. <laughs> tell the audience the significance. Obviously, you're a fisherman. You're a passionate angler. But tell us about the barracuda decal. Yeah, you know, I just uh, I wanted to put something on there that, you know, kind of represented me and how I was going to race. You know, just, uh, you know, sit back and strike a little bit more. And uh, I just... I am so excited to show my wife this stupid fish patch that I found, like, on Etsy. And, uh, like, she didn't really seem that excited. And then when we got it, she's like, wow, this is really detailed. Um, she was So, yeah, we had to put it on there. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, the Barracuda, I think it's called the Tiger of the, of the Shallows. She caught one when we were in Mexico last year or a couple years ago, which was pretty cool, actually. I think the Barracuda could be a sick nickname for you, but... <laughs> The nicknames in the chat are going yeah, off. Yeah, we, so we've, got, we've got Stone, Cold, Cole Watson. We've oh, got, I love was that, that one. Was that Cole <laughs> Did someone get him a cold, cold beverage? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, there was a Columbus due to navigation. It's been, it's been non. Turn down the Watson. There's a lot going on here for you in the chat with the nicknames. So uh, they're going to have T-shirts made by Western States, I think. Oh, well, that's, that's great. I mean, I've never had even one nickname. So, I mean, I'll take them all. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the biggest performance of your career uh without a doubt i mean i've waited seven years for something like this and i mean even more if you want to count college i i mean i was i'm from oregon i was i won seven state championships in high school i was i was good uh, in college i just was average um but you know hoka gave me a chance to keep doing something different because nobody was knocking at my door to you know, get a, you know, give me a track call or a track sponsorship or road sponsorship. So, uh, you know, it's just amazing that there's opportunities out there now for folks that want to, you know, try their hand at some of the toughest trails in the world. And that just opened up a whole new world of adventure for me. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've just been, uh, yeah, I've just been waiting a long time. So, yeah, I think let, let, let's talk about that just a little bit more. I, I asked Adam Mary the same question because I think it's similar for him. He's been he's been working for this, and he's been working and working and working, and I feel like you both have been knocking at the door. That's kind of like the, the camp I put you both in ahead of this race of, of guys who are knocking at the door, who are ready for this big day, who we know are capable of this big day. But when you're working year after year and, and you're coming up maybe just a little bit short of what we know your potential to be, like – how do you deal with the doubt of that? And then, like, how good does it feel to, like, finally get that day that we all have been, like, waiting for for you? Um, just faith, you know? Um, I mean, I mean, my wife, you know, she sees it on a daily basis. You know, I'm, 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 I'm my toughest critic. I'm so hard on myself. I'm, I'm a darn near perfectionist which isn't isn't good if you want to be happy sometimes and yeah. there's a lot of days I am not I am not very happy and um but uh you just you just don't give up you just you just keep showing up and I mean that I've I've waited seven years. Yeah. I, I think that's a long time. Yeah. That's that's a long time. We can so. we can confirm that for you. That is a long time. Yeah. Tell us about at the finish line, we were all watching it. You got down on one knee. You had a cold towel over your head. You had your golden <laughs> ticket. It looked like you were having a communion with the universe, God, whatever you want to call it. Was that just gratitude for the seven-year journey to finally get there? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I was on the phone with my wife, actually. I, I had I saw uh, the Hoka managers. They I just said, get Jocelyn on the phone because she's working Big Sur. She works for Hoka. <laughs> she's an event manager. And uh you know i just i couldn't hear a word she was saying but i just saw that it was her number on someone else's phone and uh that it was going and so i was like i'm either leaving a message or i'm you know and it was just you know tears and thank yous and all that stuff you did but, it bro unbelievable yeah. yeah i think everyone in the live chat right now is in tears so yeah. You're going to have a ton of fans coming into Western <laughs> States with you. The hype 
starts now. I guess it's the thing, though. We've got eight weeks to go to Western States. You've been there before. You were there last year. You are a perfectionist. You didn't have the day that you wanted there. You not only are going back, but you're going back as the winner of this golden ticket race. Like, what does the next eight weeks look like, mean to you, et cetera? I mean, you know, I, I think I told my coach and I told my PT that uh, going into this, if Chaz pulled a fast one on us and said, you know what, we're canceling the race, but if you want, you can run the 100 miler for the golden ticket. I, I would have done it. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm in a really good place. My my coach, Brett Hornig, he's, I'm not running as much as I've ever run. You know, we've backed things off just so that I can feel better day to day and, and like get more out of the hard days. Heck yeah. And uh, just be very specific and purposeful. And when I, I used to just, you know, kind of be a Strava all-star and I would just put up some big, you know, flat, fast workout. And that doesn't really, that's great. You know, if you do that, that's cool. And maybe it can help you get fit if you have a long time to recover. But like, I would do that kind of stuff and I would show up to race day just a little bit torched. And, uh, yeah, I haven't been showing up torched. I didn't show up that way to Black Canyon. I just raced a little too brashly and, um, had a great run there though. We were, we were yeah. stoked on that run. It was just this yeah. much, this much off. But yeah. what a great lesson, though, too, and good yeah. coaching to our friend Brett, who's in the chat here now. I mean, it's a lot of people need to hear that, right? It's sometimes it's not about being the Strava All Star. It's about yeah. putting in the right work at the right time, believing in yourself, and taking a swing, and you have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Cole Watson, you're an absolute legend, bro. <laughs> so happy for you. 14 minute victory, a really solid, incredibly well executed race. Probably your best ever. We'll see you in eight weeks at Western States. Awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. Big Cole round of applause Watson. for a champion. In studio audience, crushing it. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. And just for those watching on the live stream, Eden Nilsson, our women's race leader, is currently climbing up from Roby Point. We expect her here soon. According to Lee Yingling, she looks awesome. She ran every step up to Roby Point. So Eden Nilsson going to be here shortly. Don't go anywhere. Okay, hang tight, folks. We're going to have a quick recap here, make sure we're caught up. Love to get Justin up here, too, if we can. Let's see. Holy smokes, Eden Nilsson expected to be our next finisher. Again, with the caveat that the tracker is accurate. Okay, so, oh, okay, now it says, well, yeah, it says David Roche has finished. finished. It looks okay. like David, David Roche has made it to the finish line, folks. So Those probably who 9, were... 9.36, it looks like, for David Roche. Final finishing time. First 100K in the books for that guy. Nice job, top five. That's, I think there are probably moments where he wanted to be done, maybe around driver's flat. So yeah. we're, I can't wait to hear the stories from that one. Very important stat here, folks. Three dads in the top five. Three dads in the top five. <laughs> and your top master's yeah. athlete is going to be Eden Nelson, which is also pretty dang cool. Amazing. Hey, Justin, do you feel like coming up for a quick interview? We got two babies in here. We hand. got Justin Grunwald coming up here, folks. And then when we're done with Justin, we'll be... Eden Nelson will be Eden finishing. Eden Nelson should be, yeah, finishing. Yeah, so we're going to so keep we'll our eyes on five, that, uh, that big screen there to watch for Hida coming in. Dude, you kept it interesting, buddy. 
Yeah, much to Amanda's chagrin, I think, because I don't think she knew where you were either, which is probably very frustrating and stressful <laughs> while wrangling two adorable daughters. Justin Grunewald, my goodness, catch us up, man. It seems like you've been busy recently. Life is very busy, yeah. Um, <laughs> Hold that close. Oh, sorry. With two that were under two, Amanda and I pursuing running and then working full time in yeah. Minnesota, which doesn't really make sense because we live in Boulder, but yeah, quite busy. That's, and you, you work in healthcare, right? Like, yeah. tell, tell the people what you do who aren't familiar. Yeah, I'm a inpatient hospital doctor, so work works out where I work a week a month, basically, which is nice, but it's like a 90 hour week, so that's not nice. But And then Amanda, solo parents a week a month, which also isn't great, but... Yeah. It works. <laughs> it, we make it work. It's training. It's okay. My husband's uh, just finishing his intern year as an emergency medicine resident, so uh, oh, it's brutal. been it's been a trip. It only gets better. Yeah, that's what we're told. So well, second year's worse, and then it gets better. Oh, okay. Well, we got one more year to go then. Yeah. So I don't exactly recall what you posted earlier this week, but it was something about like what your goals were this today, and obviously there's a lot on the line between golden ticket and automatic qualification and. To, the UTMB World Final. What were your goals going into today? I mean, in reality, if you run a golden ticket race, your goal is a golden ticket. I wanted more to run CCC. I think after being at UTMB for the first time and then being at Western States, no offense to Western States, but UTMB was like way more exhilarating for me. So in my like scheme of life, maybe I'll just bump up to UTMB because I think you can hop because it's a World Series event. But um, I wanted to, I started in like 12th, 14th, and I was like, I just want to secure a top 10. I ran with Brian Curl, who we'd never chatted, and we just chatted back and forth, and I was telling him, I, everyone's coming back, I guarantee it, yeah. other than Cole, obviously. But then at between 40 and 48 miles, I moved pretty easily into second place. Unfortunately, at 52 miles, my SI joint locked up. So yeah, I think Adam minutes. Mary was like, I saw Justin. He's like, I broke my sacrum. I, I don't know I what's happening. It. Yeah, I just was standing there. I couldn't step down. Were you like, was it like a cramp sort of thing, or I don't, I don't know. Because you, so, you worked through it, obviously, right? Yeah, so it was like horrible sciatica, and I was just so of course you're running these trails and it's poison oak everywhere. In a normal scenario, I'd lay down and like push on my sacrum and try to pop it. But I was, like, standing trying to pop it for, like, 20 minutes. And it finally, <laughs> I think I had, like, two 25-minute miles right there, which I was shocked. I, I mean, Amanda, we were on the phone, and she's just like, you got time, just walk, walk, walk. And I walked, and then Adam finally came. So I you called. guys were on the phone on the race course? Yeah. Wow. And she's Amanda, my coach. good coaching. Yeah, good she's coaching. great. <laughs> she, she's got more grit than anyone I've ever met, so she rubbed off on me a little bit. <laughs> that is absolutely wild. Yeah. A so bit. Were, were you sort of like second guessing things at that point? Because you do two 25 minute miles, Adam but comes no, past whiplash. you. Whiplash. Whiplash yeah. there, right? You're like, I just want a top 10. And then you're in second and you're like, oh my God, I'm in second. Right, Maybe yeah. this is a golden ticket. And then all of a sudden it's two 25 minute miles in a row. Like, yeah. what kind of whiplash does that put you in mentally? Well, I was, I mean, I wasn't going to drop out no matter what, but I was getting Amanda prepared for. A longer day Getting than a better headlamp than I was carrying the like fake battery headlamp that they make you carry. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it it popped, and then I actually, in Amanda Basham fashion, like Bandera, I felt I was just like started sprinting, and yeah. I just had 50 minutes of recovery or whatever. So, yeah. it, but is so this mile 50, 52, 52 is that what you said? 52 to 54. Yeah. I like I couldn't step, so I just kind of walk stood walk stood yeah yeah that's so, racing so you you turn it back around and i mean again your tracker was not working so we yeah. had no idea that you literally were like, no really idea. like right behind adam mary so it comes back around all of a sudden the golden ticket conversation is alive again were you uh was that in front of mine were, were well, you really moving in that direction huge thanks to curran for being on the course and literally being the only person that had any idea what place you said oh, early but then leah i think is also out there too oh well just the people i had asked like i trusted oh, yeah, you you, trust you were like you're in ninth and tenth and then i asked 
the next guy and he's like, I think you're in 28th. And then I asked the next guy and he's like, I think you're in third. And then I asked the next guy and I'm like, I think you're in. You're so like, I'm like, Corinne's the only one I trust. And I yeah. saw her at mile 12. Like right. we have a long way to go. And there's like a lot of aid station. I'm mix between up. third and 28th right now. Exactly. So we'll see. Yeah. So ninth is the average. Well, I asked Amanda when I got to 48, when I could find the Syria guy. And I'm like, I have no idea what place I'm in. She's like, you're in second. And I was like, oh, like cool. sweet. <laughs> Like, you never know, because so many not, I mean, up-and-comers just go out so hard. Yeah. And I'm like, I swear, there's 50 guys up there, yeah. like, just giving it for a mile. So you don't know how it pans out with, like, headlamps and stuff. And so we've been, we are kind of, like, in the chat here talking to some folks. You've been kind of deemed this person in the sport who I think we've, like, had knocking at the door. That we've had, like, we're like, oh, man, this dude has potential to, like, really nail it. And I feel like in some, like, lower key situations you have. Like, you have done it, but then in, in some races, these... no one cares about I'm glorious. Yeah, exactly. You're like, I'm the crusher. Well, that's an important thing to talk about, right? No, but then, yeah. you know, but, like, coming up kind of short a little bit in these big races. And then we were watching it today, and we're like, oh, my goodness, he's not coming up short today. Like, this yeah. is huge like talk a little bit about like mentally working through it to this point where like you got to show up to a race like this and you're in you're in podium a podium position in top two contention like what does that what does that mean what has changed like where are we going well the big thing so amanda coaches me which i'm super grateful for on top of raising our children a lot but two years ago pandemic, whatever, it came in around American River, and I was in phenomenal shape, and she was coaching me, and it was Mother's Day, and the person that was supposed to switch a sign got in a car accident, so I'm at like 30 miles, and the sign says go left, and I'm a moron, and I listened to it, so I went three miles off course, I'm like, the race director caught me, like, and she's like, you're way off, like, turn around, turn around, sprinted like a maniac, back into like third place, and then DNF'd and called her, and she's like, you're a baby, you should have finished. <laughs> and she's fully right. But I'm like, you're fired. Like, like I love you, but you can't coach me. <laughs> so it was too much at the time, but I think we've grown quite a bit. And she started coaching me in February. And at that time, I didn't know, like, your Strava fitness thing could go above 100. And all of a sudden, I'm, like, up in the 150s. And I'm like, holy shit, I must be fit. <laughs> so, so it all... And we run together a lot. Yeah. Like... So many guys, what, like, I don't go out hard. I don't, like, Cole ran amazing. Yeah. But all those guys looked so toasted between, like, 40 and 48. Yeah. In the aid station, people are, like, top six just blew through, didn't grab water. And I'm already, like, icing at yeah. 20 miles. But I like to run eight-minute pace with Amanda, which is great pace for her to run for her training. And, like... I'm like the psychotic like road runner that like thinks you need to hammer, yeah. but it teaches me to keep it chill. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest like trick I've learned, just chill. Like I literally, my goal was to not try until like 48 miles. Like you shouldn't be trying. Yeah. Essentially. I mean, I know nothing about sport, but I just always try too hard. <laughs> it is but, interesting but no, though. But that's that, the evolution. Yeah, like, you know, being amazing at races that nobody cares about, like you said, like now putting it together at a big race against top competition. Is there anything you think that you changed or anything that was a breakthrough? Maybe it's even psychological, mental rather than execution. Just being patient. Yeah. I mean, letting those guys throw their blows early, like in letting them um, like you don't. It's really hard when you're putting in like people are messing with each other like um, I just let them all exhaust each other but I was like Sebastian Spieler who I've never met yeah. but I'm like dude that guy is amazing like yeah. I passed him I'm like dude I like you're incredible yeah. like and David Laney like all these people like you you were like a huge when you won Mount Fuji yeah, you're, yeah. like that made me want to do trail running so much <laughs> like thanks, so man. inspirational so it's just cool thanks buddy yeah. appreciate that a lot well, yeah, I mean, an incredible, incredible performance. And it sounds like, you know, obviously the, the top two have accepted those golden tickets. You were knocking on the door, but it sounds like it all worked out the way that it should. It sounds like you're more inspired to do CCC or UTMB. How are you thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, so my work schedule got screwed up and I worked a ton 
between January and April, which didn't make sense, but I have July, August, and September off, basically. So we're gonna go put in a proper UTMB training cycle, and Amanda's mom's coming to help watch the kids so we can actually run together, so it's gonna be amazing. You guys going over to Europe? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. What Family race are you vacant. doing, Amanda? UTMB, yes. all right. The big one. <laughs> are, we doing, are we doing, everyone's racing UTMB? Well, I wanted to run it with her, but she said she, that'd be cheating, because yeah, I just no, want, no, I just want to hang out. No husband pacing. I, I know, I know. I just want to hang out. We never Amanda's get to like, hang out. I will destroy you <laughs> yeah, if you try that. She told me she'll beat me if I run it, so I'll probably run CCC. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay, I think, Justin, congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. We're waiting for Eden Nilsson, I think to come across the finish line. Ethan says that he thinks Eden Nielsen just finished, so we'll get that confirmation. But Justin Grunewald, congratulations. Third place finish here at Canyons 100K. Absolutely amazing. Nice work. Yeah, it does look like Eden just finished. Holy smokes, my goodness. Fifth place overall. Sixth wow. place overall. Sixth place, excuse me. Sixth place overall. Our camera was closer to Ida. Okay, I don't know if we're gonna get our camera closer from its fixed position to Ida. Ida's gonna be accepting that golden ticket, we believe, from Mr. Craig Thornley. They've got her in a chair over there. We will, just like with the men, be working to get Ida and then Priscilla, who should be our second female. We know that she has crested Roby Point coming towards us here in Auburn. But yeah, Ida has officially finished in sixth position overall. Our ladies winner in a time of 9.51.07 on the clock, having traded, having gone blow for blow with Priscilla Forgy all day long, finally breaking free. We do believe that Priscilla Forgy will finish in the next 15 minutes or so here in downtown Auburn at the, at the finish line, just about 100 feet from where Dylan and I sit here on stage. Dylan has had too many sparkling waters and is uh, temporarily unavailable, but we're here to Welcome Eden Nelson in to the finish line. Your first master's athlete in the race as well, racing in that 40 to 44 year old age division. Ida came up just short on a golden ticket at Black Canyon back in February. She's still done most of her training on skis headed into this with some big running blocks as well. But yeah, big, huge shout, shout out to Ida Nelson. We'll be seeing her at Western States in just eight weeks time and then hopefully in the next 15, 20 minutes, we'll have her up on stage with us here as well. And we should be live, I believe, for another 40 or so minutes before we get kicked out of here for some awards ceremonies going on starting at 4 p.m. local time. But yeah, Eden Nelson getting that golden ticket from Craig Thornley. I cannot wait to hear about her day, assuming she is conscious in the next 20 minutes. What a competitor, man. And maybe just to repeat Absolute something that competitor. we said earlier. I mean, five years ago, Eden Nelson was unbeatable, especially at like the 50K to 50 mile type distance. Uh, you know, winning Zagama, winning uh, Transvolcania a couple times, winning North Face 50 at least once, but I kind of think she won twice. Anyway, Eden Nelson, amazing. Then had like two to three years of just like, mysterious injury after yeah, big, injury big foot injury yeah. huge foot injury thought it was yeah. career ending but you know it had the the fkt on the rim to rim to rim here in the u.s outstanding collegiate career at nau still crushing it threw down at worlds back in november in thailand where she took that second, second place position to blondine who is arguably once again that one of the best runners in the 50 mile to 100k distance yeah. You know, the, the CCC champion. Black Canyon now. So, yeah, between November and April now, second at Worlds, fourth at Black Canyon, faded a little bit, now taking home a huge W yeah, at Canyon. Living, living and training in, yeah. in Norway, yeah. like on skis yeah. mo much of the week. Could like you imagine I, training in Norway and coming to this? Coming to 90 degrees. And finishing sixth overall, incredible. Ida is just one of those, like anomalous performers and now of course adds its special unique character to the western states 100 field in just eight weeks time so we'll again before we wrap up probably do at least a little look ahead towards western states but eden nilsson will be in the field among many other world-class athletes it is shaping up to be an absolutely incredible year at north america's most important 100 miler 
as we've said multiple times, Canyons 100K here is the conclusion of the Golden Ticket Chase. These races have been going on. What the first Golden Ticket race for this year UTMB. would have been at UTMB. Oh, is it UTMB Mont Blanc? Yep, where we had Katie Scheid. Um, Esther Sislig, it went down to fifth in the women's side. Matthew Blanchard. And uh, Tom Evans. Tom Evans. Taking yeah. those tickets. So, yeah, it's been uh, it's been on since August. Then they had Le Tempier. They had... No Tom Plier this year. Then no no was, Tom Plier this year. It was but, uh, Thailand um, by UTMB. Oh, yeah, Thailand by UTMB in December. And then, uh, I guess, Javelina in October. Yeah, it's, it's a year-round golden ticket hunt at this point. So, yeah, like I said, we'll sort of wrap up the golden ticket conversation here. By the time we wrap up our conversation, we could actually probably start doing it now while we wait. Uh, I've, I've we, got it pulled up. Okay, great. And I know we have, uh, we should have Priscilla finishing here pretty soon, too. Priscilla has come up Roby Point, Roby. so we should yeah. have her in the next, I would say, 10-ish minutes. Yeah. It looks like they're expecting her to finish in eighth overall. So Eden Nelson in six. We'll probably expect Simon Widman, the German athlete who lives in Canada, to finish in seventh. And then Priscilla Forgi. And man, what a battle. I'm excited to hear about how that all played out. Yeah, I know. They've been trade it seems like they've been trading blows all day. Ida was up, then Ida was back, Priscilla was up, then Priscilla was right with her and then just behind. And Ida's definitely put some time on uh on, I mean, in, into the men's top 10 and on the women's field in the last, you know, 15 miles or so, kind of akin to, to Cole Watson, maybe that same zone just really started to accelerate, picked up those 10, 15 minutes of, of lead time, but really, really impressive running by Eden Nilsson, your women's winner today. And again, 9.51.07 on a scorcher of a day. It's hard to see what the camera's pointing at, but it's pointing away from the finish line, but towards where the golden ticket per like yeah. where they where they're receiving their golden ticket. I want to see Craig actually do the handoff like we did in the men's race, but beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, I remember we're we're doing this on a on less than a shoestring. Shoestring and duct tape, I think, <laughs> yeah, is what exactly. we're working with today. So we're making making it happen when it counts getting it done. I mean, what, what a day of racing. Again, I think we get to be live for about 30 more minutes before uh, we get a, we get our mics get cut off and we get physically pushed off the stage here in Auburn, about 100 feet away from the finish line. Let's see if we can... I want to... Okay, so right now we have in the 100K 38 total DNFs. 537 starters here today. Again, let's go back and restate the because there was massive attrition in the 100 mile in the 100 race. Mile race. I think 149 DNFs out of 278 starters. That's a lot of DNFs in that 100 mile race. What a brutal what a, race to survive. What is it that? 60% like attrition rate in Something the 100 like miler. That. Yeah. Holy smokes. That is illustrative of just what challenging conditions the oh, runners Priscilla are facing is here today. In, oh, no, she's not in yet. I was like, cool, finish her. Nope, not in about 10 minutes yeah. away for Priscilla Forgy, the Canadian the, from Edmonton, Alberta. We are waiting for our second female athlete to cross the finish line here behind Eden Nelson. We presume to take a golden ticket. We don't know that, actually, yeah, we, to I'm be certain. I'm pretty sure. I mean, she if went to Black here. Canyon. She lives in Norway. She came No, 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 no. Not Eden Nelson. We know Eden oh, Nelson's here for the ticket. Priscilla, we know. Yeah. Priscilla Forgy. Yeah. I'm assuming she's here for the ticket. I don't actually know that because she wasn't on my point. radar until I started following her with the camera at about 6.50 this morning. I do know that Arroyo Cio wants a ticket. I know Anna McKenney wants a ticket. I know Addie Bracey wants a ticket. Yeah. Arroyo Cio and Anna and Anna McKinney were both at Tarawera back in February, just shy of tickets. They're finishing in the top six, both of them, um, but not in a golden ticket position. So it's like, I know Priscilla signed up for Run Rabbit Run in the fall. I have no idea what her other summertime plans are. I don't know if Western States was one of those plans. So that will be something that we find out here when she crosses the finish line in about 10 minutes. Yep. I'm just looking a little bit further back in the results sheet here, Corinne. 
So far, it looks like Matt Daniels is continuing to soldier down the course. Early leader today is now expected to no hands imminently, which means he's got 5K to the finish, which means he should. Oh, he just went through no hands, literally just the second one looking at the tracker. So he should be in his, in his final 5K here to downtown Auburn. It's funny to hear Cole say that it measured much longer, 64, 65 miles. So. Yeah, I mean, brand new course due yeah. to both the closure from the, uh, the mosquito fire burning from cal two through devil's thumb back in the like late summer early fall and tons of snow out at the china wall staging area so i do know that like you know new course faster course hotter day yep interesting to know how long the course actually was out there but you know 64 65 miles with 10,000 feet of climbing that's a that's a job well done another early leader sebastian spaler looks like he's continuing expected at no hands in about 30 minutes but he's through clementine so it looks like he's still moving ellis bland one of our fan favorites from great britain sitting in 15th overall 11th male it looks like He's expected at no hands in about seven minutes. He's through Clementine. And then oh, Phil it does, Young. No, it, it, looks like, and it looks like Priscilla just finished. Oh, there she is. Yeah, that's her in the, uh, or at least some my screen, I think, I think is a little she's, delayed. I yeah. think she's back here in the seats. Yeah, she's wearing sort of like a, a pinkish. Pink top shirts, and, pink bottoms. Yep. So, looks like 10 hours, 20 seconds on the clock. Eight minutes back from Eden Nilsson. Your second place female is in Priscilla 4G. Interesting to know. I want to know, is she taking the ticket? Such a great question. Maybe we'll have an opportunity to see now that we're looking at the feed, if we see Craig Thornley. What I mean, he's other? definitely... That, that's Thornley right yeah, there. Yeah, no, he's definitely over tell. there, but is he he's saying, hey, you taking this thing or what? Let's judge body language here, folks. Come on, Craig. Give us Let's a thumbs up or thumbs body down. Language. We got the guy in all black obstructing our view. I'm gonna look up Priscilla. Yeah, she won. She won Ultra Trail Harakana back yeah. in the fall. She won the Squamish 50/50. Thanks, bud. She signed up for uh, for a Run Rabbit Run in the fall. But yeah, Edmonton, Edmonton, Alberta, not in the mountains. Looks like so. She was born in 1991. That makes her about 32 years yeah, old. Yeah, she's yeah 32. She's been running ultra since 2019, so pretty new. It looks like she's got. Three, five, about ten total results that I can tell at least. So Priscilla Forgi, 4G, an incredible second place finish here. A big breakthrough for her. She did win Ultra Trail Harakana, which is probably Canada's biggest race by participants. 125. Yeah, so it used to be part of the Ultra Trail World Tour. Super remote Eastern Canadian race, 125 kilometer event. Looks like she ran it in 17 hours, 37 minutes. So it's not her longest race by any means, but certainly her highest profile result here. Priscilla taking home a proud second place and potentially a ticket to Western States, which we'll hopefully find out here soon. In fact, I'm going to text Craig Thornley now. And just a reminder for those of you watching at home, we are running this off of a 400-foot Ethernet cable strung up to the Auburn newspaper behind us and an iPhone at the finish line. We are hardly an official live stream, and we are trying our darndest. And we're nailing it according to our in-house audience. Thank you, in-studio audience. Thanks. Sometimes I just need a little reassurance. But yeah, top two women in, Eda Nelson, top masters athlete, sixth overall, Priscilla Forgey, athlete out of Edmonton. We're literally texting Craig, who's 100 feet away from us, saying, did they take the tickets? And then also, can they send them our way, please? Thank you. Can you confirm Eda slash Priscilla golden ticket acceptance question mark? That's what I just, the text I just sent to Craig Dorley, the race director of the Western States. Is it appropriate to send them a text that says, bring us them? Thank you. He's, he's in this sort of squatting position here, which means it may not be an open and shut case. It's a longer conversation. Hopefully he's... They get, they get two weeks yeah. to make the decision. Sometimes you come into this race not sure. I've definitely run golden ticket races with with an intention to not take a ticket. 
or with the intention to be not sure if I'm going to take a ticket, and I think that that is a-okay. I'm hoping that they're both taking tickets. I know that Ida wanted a ticket. Yeah. I'm assuming that's a lock. The next question is, is Priscilla taking a ticket or not? If not, Arroyo Cio, who we know has been in a golden ticket hut after not finishing in the top 10 last year at Western States, running in third position right now, would be looking at that golden ticket. So that is what we're trying to find out right now for y'all. Okay, Corinne, while we're waiting for the women's podium finishers to hopefully make it to the studio before we get kicked out, let's do a quick wrap-up of the golden ticket chase and do a little Western States pontification here because I think the audience needs to know, yeah. needs to hear. We're eight weeks out. It's like, it's now time. Yeah. Canyons is over. I mean, it's still going on, but the golden ticket chase is over, which means we can now officially start prognosticating. Yep, sure Where do you can. want to start? I want I mean, to, the first we, name that's on the list is Marianne Hogan. She's now off the list, unfortunately. Yeah, and I kind of want to just walk through the golden tickets a little bit, too, yeah. to recap kind of the people who are not from the returning top ten who we know are now in the race. Again, that's Katie Scheid, the winner of UTMB. She's currently stateside oh training in Flagstaff, Arizona, getting ready for Western States. Excited to see her race on a U.S. soil, American living abroad. Um, that ticket, the second ticket did, though, ultimately run down, roll down to fifth position in the women's race at UTMB to Esther Sizzlig. I cannot pronounce her name right. She's Hungarian, but she lives in Hong Kong. She's actually been a huge part of the Pro Trail Running Association and part of that large group that worked towards getting the pregnancy deferral stuff through with UTMB. So excited to have her racing here as well. Um, the men's tickets went to Matthew Blanchard and Tom Evans. We then had the Havelina 100 in October. Those tickets went to Devin Yanko, Riley Brady, Dakota Jones, and Jonathan Rea. Excited to have those four on the start line. Seriously good talent there from Havelina. Devin, yeah. a former podium finisher at Western States. Dakota Jones, it's like he's finally running Western States. The jo been and then Jonathan Rea. Rea. Up and coming, Riley Brady, yeah. up and coming. John Ray. Silent assassin. John Ray almost had a, he, he could have, I mean, he was having the dark horse race of the century at Western States last year and then kind of fell apart in the last 20 miles. So excited to have. I handed him his buckle at the awards ceremony last year and I was like, dude, you next, were so next close. Next year, yeah. yeah. He said he told his nephew or niece that they, or his nephew or niece asked if they could have a vacation again in California next year and he said i guess i gotta get back into western states <laughs> then we went Bring over your to, sunscreen yeah we went to thailand in december um that was Je jenny quilty a canadian and uh, one phase yi um, a chinese athlete we're one and two there um jiju zhao and um ken hu lu were the top two men there um i know that all those chinese athletes do have their visas <gasps> ida nelson our the champion. champion two minutes two yeah. minutes Whatever yeah you, you take your time it. Take your time. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see you in a second. Yeah. Great job, Ida. Amazing, amazing. And then we moved from Thailand to Bandera in Texas. Courtney DeWalter put on that record-breaking performance there. Um, Nicole Bitter, who had come up just short at uh, Havelina, got her ticket there as well. Jeff Colt and J.P. Giblin got their tickets there. We then went over to, to New Zealand to Tarawera, where several of the women currently racing came up just short for tickets. But there, Nancy Zhang and Stephanie Austin got tickets. Dan jo Danny Jones and Ryan Montgomery got tickets because Hayden Hawks is already in Western States. And then uh, Black Canyon, we had Keeley Henninger, Meg Morgan get tickets, as well as Anthony Kostalis and Janusz Kowalczyk get tickets. So really cool international athletes coming over. Some coming over for the second time, like Stephanie Austin, who um, was a was in for 2020 and then had to defer um, several times. Like, she'll be coming back. It's just, it's a really exciting field of athletes. Danny Jones, we talked about earlier, like, he's someone to keep our eye on. Hayden Hawks told us that we had to keep our eye on him. Like, a really, really exciting international field will be joining us in eight weeks' time. One of the things I think is really interesting is the emergence of the Asian athletes, Chinese athletes who are coming over to Western States for what I think is really the first time where we have multiple Chinese athletes who are legit podium contenders. UTMB gave one of their spots to Shen Jian Chen, who's an incredible athlete. He's been on the podium at races like Lavaredo and CCC and things like that, races in Europe, but has that foot speed, can really push. And, and the Chinese gonna... athletes are aggressive racers. They are people to yeah, keep your eyes on. They're aggressive. gonna go out hard. Yes. Well, but interesting, they'll be on snow for the first 50K, and I wonder 
if that will dampen some of that this year. Yeah. I was just in Japan last weekend, and I spoke with Zhao Ju, Zhao Ju, whose you know name I'm sure I'm butchering here, 28 years young. He's won the Thailand by UTMB 100 miler twice. Then he just won UTMF in a sick fast time and is now coming over to Western States through his interpreter. We had a nice fun conversation. He said, I'm very focused on Western States. Usually I race more. I'm not going to race between UTMF and Western States. Of course, it's only nine weeks between those 200 milers. So, you know, most of us wouldn't race between the two, but he said he's very, very focused on it. And he's now won three huge 100 milers internationally coming to America for the first time. The Chinese storyline is going to be really fun for it's us. It's going to be really cool because yeah. we're going to have a number of those athletes with us. And just to point out right now, we're waiting for our third and fourth place women to come into the finish line. And we think they're about a minute apart. Arroyo Sio and Anna McKenney, third and fourth, about a minute separating them up at um, no hands. We know that they are both up Roby Point. We know that Arroyo was still in third at Roby Point, but we do believe it's going to be very, very tight for Arroyo Sio and Anna McKinney, who have raced neck and neck much of the day. So we are assuming that those two women will be coming to the finish line in the next three to five minutes. Third and fourth should be in as well. Looks like they're doing a podium photo op here just to our left. So. Once that's finished, we probably should get Ida onto the stage. And Karen Merlin from UTMB was carrying a golden ticket, which makes me think that Ida has, in fact, accepted her golden ticket as we expected her to. We love that. I see Ida smashing a sparkling water there right now. Oh, she's coming to us. Heck yeah, yeah. barefoot and all. Come on, Ida. <laughs> you look like you barely ran today, Ida. You're moving great. You look fresh. <laughs> Not hard at all, right? I got a little bit more excited. <laughs> we left wrong turn and like. Oh, you no. took a wrong turn. Yeah, with the aid station, it was so stupid because. Here, here, let's let's do it because we're, we're live streaming. We'll, we'll tell everyone about it. Yeah. Okay, folks, we are here with the women's champion of the Canyons 100K, Ida Nilsson from Sweden. Ida, congratulations on an amazing victory. Thank you so much. Uh, so you were just mentioning that you got off course at some point during the race. We had no idea about that. We've been following the tracker all day. What happened out there? No, it was one aid station where we met um, uh, the 100K runners. And I was just, uh, because it was when we were going to take the same way back to No Hands Bridge we, after the second big loop. And then I started to run like, uh, I was confused because I, I took um, ice and water uh, in another direction and then they like pointed up there because it was just a mess with, uh, it was hard to tell who, who came from which direction. Like, oh, and, 100K, uh, 50K. Yeah, and then uh, it was, uh, so I started to follow like the same loop I just done and I turned and I thought I saw a guy I had been running with and I was like, kept going for a while and I was like, no, this feels very wrong like and uh, so I turned back so I, I lost maybe 10 minutes and then I was like all of a sudden in seventh place we saw we saw you fall back and we're like what's <laughs> happening did Ida go out too hard oh. yeah so then I was like no did I just mess up now because te uh, to lose 10 minutes can be a lot if it's like yeah, yeah it's hard to get but I was like oh I'm just gonna run fast now and see what's happening maybe I can catch up and um, I, I caught up quite quick like uh, to to some runners and then um, I didn't know if, if I was third I thought I was third but then it was actually one yes I was already second um, and then in the yeah so, so it was not until I came to Forest Hill I knew I was leading again for you. <laughs> so, so. You were like, I have no because idea Because I, where I I've was been. in the lead, and then all of a sudden, it's like oh, a bunch of people passed, and I have no idea, like, who was after me, really. And when you were coming past everybody that you had been leading, where they were like, Where'd where you were come you, from? Ida? Yeah. Uh, I, oh, I got really confused when I came back, back behind her. Oh, yeah, teammates. We, we do yeah. believe she's just finished. Anna McKinney and Arroyo CEO have made it in. Your teammate taking third and 10, 11.43 on the clock, just ahead of Anna McKinney from Australia and 10, 12, 59. You had a great race at Black Canyon, but ultimately came up just a little bit short there. It was a hard day, it was a hot day. I know that you've still been training on skis a bunch between between then and now. Could tell us a little bit about your prep post Black Canyon coming into this race today. Yeah, I've been much uh, better prepared now and more running, even though I still skied a lot, but uh, now I've done like enough running and uh, for Black Canyon, like, um, 
I wasn't meant to run that little, but I, I got a hip problem, so it got way almost nothing the, the three weeks leading up to it, so, so that wasn't... And now also it starts to melt a little bit, so it's easier to uh, to get in more running if it's not just road running or treadmill. So um, Actually, I've been a really nice month leading up to the race. We had like one month of sun every day in Norway, so uh, yeah, everyone got a little bit crazy in the training there <laughs> because then he, he just want to be outside. So um, yeah. yeah, overall I felt uh, prepared, but then maybe not right for this kind of trail but yeah. I, it's like a race I, I felt like when I was uh, running here like two days ago I was like oh this is a race I, I liked before at least and hopefully I can <laughs> still run well, well in this the, type of train. Talk about the, the crazy change in environment though because you're coming from again the winter was spring in Norway to 90 degree Fahrenheit temperatures unseasonably warm spring day here in California did the heat bother you at all? It got really warm in the end, actually, yeah. because it was more open and it was also um, longer between the aid stations. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in the beginning it wasn't a problem. And I mean, it was fine when I got drinks and ice. It was just like I ran out a little bit uh, in between in summer, towards the end. But I think I can handle heat uh, quite well, like uh, running in heat. It was, yeah, the same in Thailand. I've been like in cold weather uh, all the way until then. So yeah, you've done well in the heat before. You've done well at Transvolcania. You did well at Thailand in the fall. You know, looking at the race today, we heard from the men that they ran out of water in those sections too. So not alone there. That seemed to be a theme for the day. But you know, looking ahead, you now have this ticket into Western states. It should be hot, but it'll be snowy for the first 50k probably. So maybe a perfect race for you. How are you feeling looking towards Western states? No, it feels uh, really nice to get that golden ticket because I, I wanted it, and I'm, of course I've been. I had a backup plan that wasn't bad either. If I uh, would not get it today, but it's a race I wanted to run for, yeah, since 2019 pretty much. But then it was just gone the years, like two years with injury, and then like I wasn't really re like it's always hard to qualify right in the winter, and you have to be ready to do 100k then, and I haven't really been that. The last couple of years so have you ever run 100 miles before no yeah. never 100k is the longest yeah i remember you did ccc and obviously i remember all your amazing victories between 40 and 80k what do you think about 100 miles for the first time yeah i don't know really it feels at least nice now for a while i felt after my two injury years as i was like oh i can't even handle like a 50 miler like yeah. it's uh, i broke down and uh, um, but then um, now at least it feels good again that I can do like 80, 100k. So hopefully I can uh, can um, put some more tra more running, more training now, so I can do the 100 miler. Yeah, you're, so you've been over in the U.S. twice now. You're over in in February. You're over now. Are you going to be staying over here for? Like for prep between now and Western States, are you going home? Are you, are you coming back, back over early? Well, yeah, wh what's happening? Over. Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't decide before this, so I had an open ticket back. But my plan was to stay uh, if I qualified because I think it's too many times to fly over back and forth. And uh, so I will uh, go to Flagstaff now for maybe the, like three or four weeks and then hopefully join the training camp and, and see the course. Amazing. I so love an open-ended ticket, and now you don't have to go home. I hope you packed enough clothes or that the craft team uh, is going to be sending you some, a fresh wardrobe here because it's going to be a long trip. And you'll have months. great training partners. I know Tom Evans is headed over to Flagstaff to train. Katie Scheid is there right now. It's going to be a good place to be, I think, in that build-up. And it's a place that's kind of like a second home for you. Yeah, it's nice. And it's, yeah, it is the perfect terrain actually around there for Western State. And it's easy to get down and get heat and everything. Maybe a uh, last question for you here. You just mentioned the two hard years of injury. Now, between second at the World Champs, you know, a proud fourth place at Black Canyon, now a sick victory here at Canyons, especially when you get off course for 10 minutes to finish sixth overall. Like, that That's was incredible That's insane. First Masters, too. Like, congratulations. A huge run. Maybe is there anything you want to say about, like, building that confidence back in yourself after two years of injury? No, it, I, it just takes time. Like, it has... Um, sometimes I feel like, oh, I should just quit. I felt for a while I did so many bad results, but then it had, like, other reasons as well, like, the whole last year was a lot of like COVID problems uh, and uh, it just takes time when you have that 
long layoff to, to build up again and be like durable and uh, it's not easier when you get over 40 either to, to get back there. Well, congratulations. It's great to see you back at the top of your game. We can't wait to see you at Western States. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Cheer, cheering you on. Eden Nilsson, everybody. Eda Nilsson. Holy smokes, folks. She was off course for 10 minutes. She just finished sixth overall. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yes, you got this. Step by step. Sixth, Sixth overall. Check, check, check. My mic. Oh, my mic's back. Haha. -ha. Um, yeah, four. Holy smokes, four Chris. women in the top 11. Arroyo, Arroyo, and Anna finishing very, very close together again. They were so close together at Terrawera as well. What a four wild women in the race. top 11. Hey, Priscilla, can you hear me? You want to come do a quick interview? Oh, they want to do a photo of the podium first. Quick, That's quick photo okay. Of the podium. Hey, Chaz, you want to come sit up here for a sec? Quick, quick three-minute interview real quick for the fans. We Come got the race us. director Come coming onto the stage. You're, mo you're moving better than these uh, 100K runners. <laughs> I uh, haven't slept yet. So. Oh, perfect. You, yeah. You're doing good. Tell, I Chaz just hasn't slept yet. This is our race director here at the Canyons by UTMB. Chaz, what a weekend, bro. Yeah. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> do you need not a coffee, done. a cold I, brew? What so do you need? I keep, uh, so, yeah, I, yeah. I keep hitting the uh, espresso, double espresso shot yeah. about every four hours. So, yeah, it's been amazing. Uh, weather is beautiful, but just a little too beautiful. <laughs> but, yeah, it's amazing to hear all the languages, people from all over the world. Yeah. Um, uh, it's great to see Cole win. Yeah, in his home turf. Amazing. Yeah. I guess, okay, so I ran this race back in 2018. We ran out and backs from Forest Hill. Oh, uh, yeah. It was awesome. The race is still awesome, but it's different, right? Like, yep. Yep. what does it mean to see it grow from that iteration of canyons? This kind of like low key, but hey, you're running Western States. It's a pretty good prep race. Rob Crouch run it. Magda Belez run it. Maybe you should run it type of thing to like, a UTMB World Series major with, you know, 500 plus starters on the line for the 100K, yeah. the 25K, 100 mile. Like, that's insane. Yeah. So when the World Series was announced, um, it was like, you know, I think we could be a part of that. Um, the, the feeling and that UTMB vibe was just um, something we wanted to be a part of. And so... Um, when we started Canyons in 2014, it, there was no other race on the Western States Trail out in the canyons, right? So it took me six, seven years to get into Western States. So um, it was time that, you know, we gave people the opportunity to go out there because like, if you didn't know how to just get out in the canyons, you, you couldn't go. Like, and also, yeah, it... Uh, it just sort of all fell together. So with COVID, we had to do um, point to point, no more out and back. We couldn't get a permit. So like, okay, well, let's run Auburn to let's see where it works. And it ended up at China Wall, just about perfect. And then, um, yeah, just it's it's a great weather. vibe. It's yeah. a great We've vibe. Been, we, I think yeah. we are thoroughly impressed. Yeah. I think we didn't know what to expect. Per se, I volunteered that pandemic year. Yeah. I was working safety at the start and safety at the finish line. Like, I don't think we knew quite what to expect. We weren't here on the ground last year. Like, it is the vibe. I think we can agree the vibe is good. The vibe's great. The vibe's great. Maybe for those who aren't familiar, obviously, this year you were dealt extra complications with the snowpack and the mosquito fire. Oh. 
maybe talk about dealing with those challenges as a race director and, and maybe which one impacted the course the most because obviously we, we ran alternate courses this year yeah so when the mosquito fire really started to crush into the western states trail michigan bluff it's like um we better start thinking of what to do and so sort of mapped it out and never would i have thought that snow was going to be the reason why we had to alter the course this year so um and we ended up with a pretty great course for being an alternate and started mapping it out it's like oh perfect distance love it yeah and so we always wanted to you know with the first year being the World Series, we started here and finished it at the different spots, but we wanted to have that festival atmosphere. Yeah. So, um, wait for next year. We'll see what happens. And it's kind of cool. Like so, I, it's like I like that course that goes that goes point to point. But man, it's pretty cool to have everyone start and finish in, in Auburn as well, which I think has to be kind of this like oh, interesting. Like how do we how do we adapt to that? So we definitely want to finish everyone in for in Auburn next year. Ooh, oh. net downhill course. Western States prep, everyone. You listening I mean, at home? It is really great to have the finish line right here in the middle of town. I mean, obviously, yep. Corinne and I have sat on the track at Western States, and we've finished Western States on the track, Placer High. There's nothing like it. It's incredible. Man, what a amazing alternative too i mean it's a different experience too for people who have done western states to have that finish line vibe right in the center of town here it's pretty special yeah um auburn has really welcomed us you know we said hey look we think we can build something wonderful we want to share with the world what auburn western states trail um the u.s history it all is centered right here yeah and so they're like, okay, let's go for it. We'll shut down the street for you. We'll open up the town. Yeah. And uh, I said, I think we can do it. And yeah, here we are. Amazing. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Thank Jess. Thanks for having us. We've had a blast being here. And uh, we've loved every second of yeah. it. Coming back next year? You can't get rid of us, Chess. Wait, and then you guys can't run. No, I can't run canyons. Uh, That's right. okay. I will run, we'll run Gorge. Yeah, we'll run, we'll go, run we'll Gorge, go. and then I'll come here. You can, you can run Gorge. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Or talk at Gorge, whatever you want to do. <laughs> All right, go get cool. yourself a double espresso. Thanks for sitting with us. Yes. Congratulations. Thank Good you. luck with the rest okay, of the event. So Thank you. Oh, man, I'm <laughs> so hot. Yeah, none of Okay, we're going to have to sign off here pretty soon, so we're going to try and get... Quickly. Should we get. Should we get both of them? Should we try and get both of them simultaneously? Is Arroyo over there? No, that's oh. that's Ida. Yeah. She is there. At a minimum, let's get Priscilla. I think that's fine, given that we have to sign off. We're going to try to hey, Priscilla. wrangle Priscilla to the stage. They can assist you in walking, Priscilla. Yes. Our new favorite runner. Potentially, check, check, check. Potentially the performance of the weekend or story of the weekend here. Okay. Yeah, he's still Dylan or Adam, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, we joked about that earlier. Don't worry. <laughs> I saw another guy that I know on course, and I didn't even, I was like, I'm not even going to try to say his name. You're like, you could be I, I, anything. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Runner's brain is my excuse. <laughs> okay, folks, we are back. Second place finisher in the women's 100K race, Priscilla Forgy from Canada. Edmonton. Edmonton Alberta. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you came out of nowhere today. Tell us about yourself. I mean, oh, there's a lot of people I think are hearing your name for the first time. Yeah, no, new fans. About yourself. for sure. Like, I, you know, it was funny. Like, my main goal for today was, uh, well, I had a couple goals. One of them was to try to get the top 10 spot to go to UTMB. Um, and I was like, that's going to be a really big struggle for me. I didn't, I was laughing with my friends at, it sounds so ridiculous, but I felt like my fitness wasn't there. And I 
like a lot of this race today, I felt like it was a lot of pure will, <laughs> just pushing. And um, yeah, I'm sorry. What, did, what was the question? <laughs> just tell, tell us about yourself. Yeah, you know, yeah, like what's yeah. your history? And, oh I mean, man, we okay, looked up so your results and things. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. she's run. She's yeah. run some fast yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, like I've done most of my races in Canada. Well, all of them except Havelina, which I DNF'd in October. I saw that. Yeah. 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 Um, and I started running. Uh, I guess about five or six years ago I started with marathons and then my I had a friend that brought me in uh, for a trail run and I was like I'm never running another marathon again <laughs> and um, I really found just like my love for trails and I started with a 50k uh, in Canmore Alberta Grizzly and then I just kind of worked my way up the distances and um I think, like, I love the 100k distance. It's actually, it's only my second 100k. Um, and, yeah, so now I'm just kind of trying to push myself and see what I'm capable of. And uh, Before we go any further, are you taking the golden ticket or not? We have to get uh, that out of the way here first. Um, People need to know. I, I'm undecided. I, it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> How long do I have to I think you get, I think Craig gives you two weeks. Oh, okay. Um, it, that was absolutely not in my plan. I, like, I didn't, it wasn't even a third goal or fifth goal. Like, I You're literally. Like, top ten is going to be hard. That's all exactly. I want. Exactly. I was like, just top ten. I can do it. Just scratch the surface. Like, get tenth place. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's, uh, I, I have no idea. I don't feel like. It, it wasn't in my plan, so um, I think I will err on the side. Like, likely I will not be running in, at Western States. Arroyo, see ya. <laughs> you're on notice, Arroyo. Arroyo, you're on Arroyo. notice. <laughs> Golden ticket potential. No, but that is, like, and, and that's the thing. It's like, it's up to you. Yeah. It's a big decision. Yeah. People have definitely turned them down because it's like, it's not the right time. They're not ready. They've got other plans, and that is a okay. Because the nice thing is, is that someone else will get their get their spot, and that's amazing. Definitely. Like for me, my main focus would be if I feel healthy. I think I'll have to give it a week to see where my body's at. Yeah. Um, and then decide from there. I love so, it. Yeah. It's one of those things too, where you're like, do I really want to run these trails again oh my in God. this heat? I was out there and I was like, I love this. I hate this. I love it. I hate it. Every race, <laughs> I'm do like, this? I quit ultra running twice <laughs> yeah. during the like forever. I'm I like always. retire during the race, and then by the end of it, I'm like, okay, what's next? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so tell us a bit about how it played out out there, because I caught you yeah. like early in the morning. You were like sort of in just behind eating us and was an early leader. Yeah. <laughs> There was a, a nice little group of you guys running together yeah. for a little bit. So tell us how it played out. Yeah, so uh, in the morning, like, I had no idea where I was placed at all, just with the dark. I, I didn't, I wasn't really looking to see how many women were ahead of me. I was pretty sure there weren't 10, so that was really my main focus. <laughs> and... Um, when I was running with those girls, like I was feeling really great. Um, I, like the day in general, like I, I really wanted to focus on running my own race at Havelina. I went out with as many people, like fast women as I could. And um, the desert trails weren't for me. I was really fast. I just felt like I was, I was completely out of my league. And um, today was, I was like, I just want to smile all day. I want to run my own race. I want to listen to my body and that's kind of what I did so anytime I saw people uh, or any females it didn't make me upset I was just kind of like okay I'm like hey. nice to see so yeah how's it going um and I I started hearing I was in second place um I I feel like it was around maybe 40 50k or so and um then Ida I'm sure she let you know she got we heard Locked. she took a detour yeah, we, we on accident. We hadn't heard that, though. We hadn't heard we that. We didn't oh know that until she finished, that she yeah. all of a sudden was ten, lost like 10 minutes or something. Yeah, so she was running with a guy that had told me, because I didn't know where she was. I just assumed she was always in front of me. Yep. And then he said that he heard that she got, she took a detour, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then she came up to me qu quite quickly after that, and... When I saw her running, I was like, I'm not even going to touch that. I, she is like a beast on the hills, and I was not today. 
Um, and so I was like, I'm not gonna try to hold on to her and blow up. I'm happy with second. I can't even believe I'm here. So um, it was nice to see her and see that she was able to regain, um, like get back into that play first place. Cause I actually feel like she like literally had the fitness for it. It would be such a shame if she went it, too far. Did you know who Ida was before today? Um, I had looked at the elite list and I had listened to, um, like a couple of people like reviews about what they who they thought were going to be yeah. in the top three and I heard her name a lot and heard is she a skier yeah. or yeah okay and I was like she's Holy a shit, when, of the game oh my now. god she's like an old time great oh my god yeah like amazing yeah. I was when I heard all, all the training she was doing I was like oh my god <laughs> I'm running in Edmonton Alberta in the river valley that has like 400 meters of elevation total <laughs> and what am I doing yeah. <laughs> a little so, imposter syndrome maybe that might last oh, a little bit longer but I just want to say that's that's yeah. Big swing here. Yeah. You're really good. Yeah. I was going to say, like, that should give you, like, huge confidence in your own abilities. Like, now with your, you know, a few years in the sport and whatever it is, maybe eight or nine, ten finishes on your ballot, you're probably starting to feel some momentum and sort of setting some big goals for yourself. Like, where are you viewing yourself in your career right now? What's exciting you about, about the sport right now? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question because I found, and I'm sure, like, just in general, like, psychology of any sport it can really um be like we can kind of get in our own heads and um I've definitely lacked confidence in my running for a long time and um I've for a long time been like oh well I've only run like I win these races but it's in like this area or like I'll always make an excuse of why totally. I want it not that I actually am a good runner um but today I was like I actually like really pushed and I feel like I can like up my training and even do better, which is really exciting. Um, and I'm excited for that. So I'm so excited for UTMB because I am like dedicated to getting to the mountains. We have, we're about four and a half hours away from the mountains and, um, or four hours, depending where you're going. And, um, I am like dedicated to going there as much as possible and getting in a completely different training regime. Yeah. So. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that's so exciting. We can't we can't wait to see what happens. We can't wait to yeah. see if that's seeing you in eight weeks back here, if that's <laughs> cheering you on at the UTMB series finale races in We'll both August. be at both races, we'll so we'll hang out there, either so way. You know? No matter what, you know, like well, you come find us, yeah. we'll be fine. That sounds perfect. I promise I'll get your name right next time. <laughs> I do feel really bad about that. <laughs> Priscilla, congratulations Thank on a hard you. fought, well earned second place for this year. So Huge much. breakthrough for you. Big we're, fans, we're glad new to get fans. to know you. Thank yep. you so much, you guys. Congratulations. Big round of so applause supportive. for Priscilla. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we either need... We're going to have to shut it down here in a sec. If Aurora, Aurora is here, we could do a quick interview. Oh, she's not here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up now, folks. Holy smokes, what a day. How you doing, Ryan? You good? Okay. So good, so good. Okay, we're going to go ahead and wrap up now. What an incredible weekend. What an incredible day. Thanks to everybody who's watching us on YouTube right now. Like, holy smokes, I can't believe we pulled this off today. This is an absolute miracle. We swung for the fences, and we ended up, like, sticking a pretty cool broadcast experience. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you should hit the subscribe button, please. That would be really nice. That would be really nice. I'm sorry to ask. I feel a little bit like a dweeb to even say that, but please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go back and look at all the awesome videos. My guy Ryan Thrower is right here right now. He made all the beautiful videos you see on our YouTube channel. Definitely watch the video with Cole that we published this week with the context of him winning today's race. It will be a very special five minute, six minute video experience for you. So thank you so much for watching. Corinne, any final thoughts for our viewing audience before we sign off? Oh my goodness, isn't ultra running just super fun? Best sport. At, hey, well, I have an important announcement before we go. <laughs> Trail Fire running merch. will save the world. Do your part. Do your part. Thanks, team. This is amazing. We'll, uh, we'll see you uh, back here in, uh, in eight weeks at the track for Western States. Don't go anywhere. Peace out, everybody. Thanks so much.